So, Dexterity versus Hydra. Hydra finishing second place last season, but not only that, they've managed to perform really well in seasons one and two. This will be their third appearance in three seasons for CCS. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, getting started on Coastline, the first Coastline we've seen today. Yeah, I'm excited by Coastline. Like I talked about uh, in the last matchup, Coastline, a very situational pick, uh, not something that is kind of that standard, that border Oregon, and then pick your third. Um, Coastline is a map that is, it's seen a lot more play. Uh, when it came out, nobody was really playing Coast. It was one of those maps that if you saw, you were excited uh, just to see how teams would play. Now there's a little bit more of an established meta on it. And uh, the thing that is so unique right. about Coastline compared to other maps in the comp pool is its versatility. You can play all four bomb sites effectively, competitively on Coastline. There's... There's no real, like an Oregon setup or a border setup really, where there's two universal sites that everyone uses and the other two just kind of get tossed by the wayside. Um, on Coastline, all four sites have been viable, proven viable and heavily active through plenty of different teams. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll point this out is up until now, we have never, ever seen, except for, I think it's so rare that we've seen it once and people know about it, and that's Blue Bar and Sunrise Bar, and throughout the qualifiers, we saw it more, as often as any other site on this map, which just goes to show the viability of of all these sites like you mentioned on. At Penthouse Theater, we've seen entire games played with that not being picked once, with us going to Kitchen and Hookah, or, or Blue Bar, Sunrise Bar and Hookah, and uh, Jaeger there picking up that Twitch drone. Fantastic job as it was approaching the mirror. So you got a two-man roam with a mirror downstairs. An interesting setup for Dexterity as, yes, the bottom clear is sometimes utilized and can be important on Coastline. Um, but more often than not, we're seeing more of a theater stairs push than anything. Uh, so I'm a little interested in seeing this uh, this heavy utility uh, implementation downstairs. They'll be shooting Hibana pellets off that mirror as we approach a minute deep into the round. Uh, still a 5v5, but lots of pressure coming downstairs, and Hot and Cole going to start things off with that black beard. SR25 taking down Sipran OJ. It was the Jaeger playing behind the mirror. Yeah, Sipran OJ, one of their very heavy fraggers. Nyx will take one of his own on, de on uh, Hyper, rather. And so there's two very, very good fraggers for Dexterity off the board here early. A minute and a half left to work with. And, you know, vertical play, yeah, sometimes, but they do have the buck. And all of that pressure put on a kitchen might entice the buck, whether or not he was planning on it, to go downstairs and start opening up the ceiling anyway. Uh, good job stopping the Mira blow with the uh, with the uh, little Habana pellets, the ex Kairos. But uh, unfortunately, you traded your life for it, so not a trade that I would want to make any time. Habana will actually miss the top row of pellets, unfortunate, and will not get a walkable or vaultable hole opened up here in the, in the wall. So Bulls go back, Chef missing all of his shots, but his, his uh, opponent's missing theirs too. RTC will pick up a kill, and that will be Chef off the board, so only Yaga with a tad bit of health, and Exo now getting eliminated, 4v1. Smoke will go out and do a little bit of damage, but not much you can do here if you're Smoke. And no, RTC will get a multi-kill for the round and a sweep coming through by Hydra here early on Coastline. Wonderful execution there by Hydra. You know, I thought they would get caught up with that downstairs hold, but uh, that downstairs hold really not uh, killing as much time as they needed to. Um, for as much utility that was uh, placed downstairs and... Uh, eventually lost a minute and a half deep. Like you talked about, the Blue Bar Sunrise Bar being a, a more common pickup is where we head to our second defense location uh, elected by Dexterity. Honestly, that uh, that roam game needs to, lead, needs to be a lot more effective uh, on the side of Dexterity, and I love the idea of establishing for a push like you're looking like you're gonna go vip you're looking like you're gonna try and take that penthouse wall and then swapping up mid round and then rotating over to the top of theater stairs like i talked about was the more prevalent take on that site these days absolutely now typically we see it's more common for a team to attempt to defend a site twice if they're unsuccessful after two attempts then they'll move i really really like what dexterity is doing here and they're switching because when you get for, for, for lack of a better word, steamrolled on a defensive hold, 
it, it's better to kind of just let that site lay where it is, move to a new site. That way you can get some kills, you know, have a better chance at winning and get some of your mojo back. Because losing, you know, with only uh, four to one at the end or four to zero at the end, I guess, is not fun if you're on defense. It is not a great way to set the pace for the game because it makes the attackers in their mind feel a little bit better. It makes you feel a little bit less. And the attackers can be a little bit more aggressive and they tend to win their gunfights. I mean, the psychological is a big, big factor whenever you're playing games like this. I'm a little surprised that there's uh, no mirror coming out of the hands of Dexterity. Um, usually when you're defending Sunrise um, and Blue Bar, their exact setup right now is what you would set up for, but also bringing in the Mira uh, inside of Hookah to look in through pool into Aquarium to try and stop that push on the clear top side. Instead of electing to bring the Echo for the information, Yaga's lost a uh, decent chunk of health, actually, as that smoke playing inside of sight. It's not what you want to start the round off with as we approach uh, a minute deep once again. Exo's going to rotate back from office into uh, Blue Bar, and now this Rome clear coming up from the kitchen side, hot and cold, electing to go for the Ash instead of the Blackbeard this time around. And he's seemingly gone unnoticed coming down the main hallway. Could apply a lot of pressure and grab some sneaky frags here as he slowly walks up the kitchen hallway. Absolutely. Now, we saw the entirety of SK Gaming playing in CCS last season. They actually won first place. Hotton now playing with Hydra, kind of on vacation. He's just kind of run, run in and do Ash things. I bet you that's kind of a big part of their strategy. Just let Hotton do his own thing, and we will attack the site as a four-man squad somewhere else. Exo will get the kill number one. Hot will run inside. He'll get a double kill. Like I said, just doing Ash things. Just let him go do his own thing. And just like that, boom, boom, it is all over. Another 4-0 victory. Hydra now taking Dexterity down heftily on two different sites. I thought this game would be closer. Granted, it's only been two rounds. True. But wow, Dexterity looks slow. That's that's kind of what I'm picking out of this. It's not that they're getting outgunned. I mean, they are. But it's that's not the only factor here. It's not that they are setting up uh, improperly. I mean, they've had decent defaults so far through both of these sites. They haven't seen or haven't gone for anything too innovative on a coastline, a map that uh, doesn't really play too well to the teams that try to innovate beyond their reach. But, I mean, they just seem very slow to react. They seem very, very content to sit in one place, not try and make any aggressive moves, and just wait for Hydra to come to them. The roam game has been non-existent, and they are getting slaughtered for it. They definitely need to be picking up the aggression, and especially a team like Dexterity, a team that's best known for their aggressive play. You have a lot of yeah. young, skilled fraggers on the board, and they are not doing what they're meant to be doing. And I think you look at it, and you kind of got to wonder maybe if they're trying to play to a different mindset, a mindset or a different style. That is not working. You need to go back to what makes you good, which is being that kind of ranked starry, I'm going to run around and frag, because it does work at the highest level. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing about it is – Four people were upstairs giving pressure on the roamers. So the so the roamers were out gun four to three upstairs. And then you have hot and sneaking right down the hallway, jumping into sight, and eliminating both of your anchors before they know what hit you know, before they know what hit them. So now you're kind of surrounded, right? You're 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 outnumbered on all sides. There's more angles to watch. You're getting pinched by this time. We're about halfway into the round. By this time, you've been droned. You've been pinged. They know where you are. They're closing in on you from multiple angles, and it's just not a fun situation. Now, if you can engage as the roamers with this squadron coming to hunt you down and come out the other side with more people than they do, then then it makes it a little bit easier to play that really aggressive. You know, where's the last guy? Hyper, I'm not sure what he was doing. Outside Detected will get eliminated. RTC will get one of his own. And the uh, damage just keeps being dealt here to Dexterity. 
Yeah, Hyper had nowhere to go. He knew that Hodden was cutting off his rotation back to Hookah, so he tried to vault out the double window in billiards. Nyx gonna drop Exo as a Claymore. will claim the life of Yaga. That one also going to Nyx. It's all up to Chef now in a 1v5. Hyper had nowhere to go. He elected to try and vault out the main window as a rotation back to site. He gets gunned down for it. Chef coming in on a massive flank. He's being jackal pinged. RTC will cut him down with a PDW. And Dexterity looking like a shell of themselves three rounds deep. I really don't know how to describe it. I, I don't know. I mean, clearly these kids are skilled. I, there's nobody that could tell you that these kids don't have skills at all, right? And so what is it? Is it you haven't found your groove? Maybe you're not as comfortable on this map as you thought you were. Maybe this was the other team's pick or something. But either way, it's, it's not going very good so far for them. And again... I, the practice, I don't know what it is, but they need to find something because we're three rounds deep and only two people on Dexterity have managed to find even a single kill. Rough spot to be in for Dex. Um, I wouldn't say Coastline is necessarily attacker or defender favored. It's about the style of which you play. I may sound like a broken record here, but the Rome game is not strong enough from Dexterity right now. They are getting cornered. I mean, you have an ash on roof holding rotations. That's not the most typical situation to run into, but it's working for Hydra. You need to be able to counter strat. You need to be able to react and make changes mid round and mid game to better yourselves. You need to play dynamic. I mean, they tried the blue bar sunrise bar back to back rounds. The only thing that really changed was the reinforcements that stopped uh, hot and cold the first time around. They just left that open and saw for him to ash open the wall. Pick up one frag with and force another one to jump out a double window for uh, for the <laughs> second kill. And then you're taking out the Echo off the board. That, that's all you did. That was your change. You need to get more aggressive in positions where you can flank. You, it, Coastline plays very similarly to Chalet in the fact that it's not about your um, your presence roam and the fact that you're staying in one room and that's your roam game. It's about the delayed roam. It's about the ability to maneuver around the map. Yes, the roof causes some problems over courtyard, but it's up to you as a roamer to make those changes and know where you can and can't rotate to make those effective rotations uh, by manipulating the map. Um, they're leaving things very stationary, very stale, um, and honestly, it is not working out for them in the slightest. It is not. And on the topic of making those, you know, having your IGL make those middle-of-the-game changes, the attack coming out from... Hydra has been so destructive, so targeted, and so quick. What can you do? <laughs> I mean, during the round, of course, after the round, we could talk about, okay, you know what? If they're going to be doing this kind of stuff, let's pull out the double Frenchman maneuver, right? Two ACOGs, a bunch of fatties, three armors, and let's just make that happen. The aggressive peep by Exo, and he just cannot land the shots. Aviation will end his life. A minute and a half off the board. Hot and cold will get a kill underneath with the Ash. This is Ash wreaking havoc in Kitchen again. And now a lot of droning, a lot of information gathering as the wall gets opened up from VIP into the penthouse. Yeah, we saw what we asked for, which was more aggression, but Exo completely whiffing his shots. Fragner going to be coming flying in, displacing both the smoke and the mirror off of their mirrors or momentarily. They do have that pressure from the big window. Wall breached open into v uh, from VIP into Penthouse. And now this is Hyper, the bandit, going for the rotation down the main stairs. Elects better and stays topside in. Chef with a great kill through the floor into hot and cold to give some kind of momentum back in the favor of Dexterity. Smoke grenade going to be displacing this mirror. Another frag grenade coming out. Pressed up against the wall. Won't do any damage to Chef as he backs off. This mirror might be damaged. They pop the left side mirror and Hyper spraying through it. The plant is going down by Rudy. He will evacuate to VIP as more sprays go back and forth no bullets hitting their targets and now dexterity gonna have to play the man down post plant retake and it's not looking good um you know as dominant as dexterity was in the qualifiers i'm just a little bit flabbergasted at the performance here so far today rtc will get another one and now nothing left to do but try and push up rtc will get another one with the pdw of jackal not even needing to reload and uh that will be it that's Three consecutive rounds, or are we at four now? Four. Four consecutive rounds, and uh, Dexterity not... Sh I mean, they got... They equaled their kills for the entire rest of the game that last round, but that's just not good enough. They're going to have to make something happen now. Penthouse Theater, they're going for it one more time. 
And uh, there it is. There's the double Frenchman setup that I said that they might need to just start trying. Just throw a lot of anchors all around sight and uh, see if you could stop it. But when I did say that, I was thinking, wow, you know, Hydra's been really aggressive, very fast moving up to this point. It, not necessarily aggressive because they had the information, right? There was drones going out. They were doing their research before they moved forward. So not dumb, aggressive, like, let's peek around this corner and see if there's anybody there. But they were moving very swiftly. And this is a very good counter that the last round, they weren't moving as swiftly. They were doing a little bit more research, taking their time. You know, got the plant down. It, it was the first round where the plant actually went down. And it wasn't, you know, it didn't end on just wiping out the enemy team, at least not at first. So, I even though I said this might be a good way to go, uh, now I'm kind of disagreeing with it. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Dexterity needs to find something. It was time for a change. They made that change. Let's see if it'll work out. After the first two rounds, I said it wasn't just Dexterity getting outgunned. After that round, you saw the aggression coming out from Exo, and he whiffs the shots on Aviation on a window. You saw more aggression from Hyper as the Bandit going downstairs, whiffing his shots again. Uh, and then Hyper later again in that round, missing the headshot onto the attacking uh, Jackal. I believe it was RTC inside of Hall of Fame. Now you're just getting outgunned. Now you're just, you look like shells of yourselves, and Dexterity... This has got to be hard. I think they actually missed a reinforcement on the VIP wall. They are a little shooken up right now, and it's it's not looking promising. Like you said, maybe they'll try and anchor a little bit harder um, to try and await the... Yeah, see, the reinforcement's going up a minute deep into the action phase. The frag grenade's going to come out, and it downs Yaga, but thankfully he's docked. He'll stim pistol himself back up and survive that mistake. Yeah, you're a little ahead of me here, but uh, <laughs> uh, that was my fault. I kind of tapped on the VLC so after this round I'll refresh and we'll get back in sync here but uh, uh, a lot of action going off a lot of holes getting opened up I'm not sure how far back we ended up getting there hadn't even been a kill coming out on my feed yet but uh, sipping on OJ will go back and forth and Buck is just annihilating the floor so bullets going down onto Buck injuring him aviation getting nice and low Still a lot of peeking going on. About a, half the round gone. Damage going back and forth. Still nobody killed. And it looks like this uh, this little setup here is being a little bit more effective. Hyper will get the opening kill onto the Jackal. A nice headshot there. Rook with the, uh, the suppressor on. Okay, looks like we are timed up indeed. Fantastic. So, no kills. Or, I'm sorry, just the Jackal killed. Um, minute left to go a couple of very weak players some trades will go back and forth Nix will get a kill Sippin will trade him right back smoke going out Sippin will get a double kill this is exactly what we needed to see out of Sippin one of the best fraggers here on dexterity Rudy will end the life of Sippin hyper will trade him right back only hot and left he will trade no Yago will actually finish it off after killing hyper and finally finally Mr. Flynn a little life here out of dexterity, but is it too little too late? They play that anchor game, and it works out much better for them. I, I, I agree with the sentiment, sentiment. Sorry, Maybe it's a little too late here. Um, like we talk about, if you get on a roll in those first, uh, whichever side you're on, it causes a snowball effect, and then you only need to close it out. You got... It would have been nicer with the 5-0, but you cannot be sad about walking away with a 4-1 lead uh, after those first five attack rounds for yourselves. Uh, Hydra in a wonderful position to take map number one, and Dexterity look like Coastline is maybe a map they need to go back to the drawing board on. This is, uh, is looking pretty rough. They did get the one there. Uh, I think maybe Hydra just took their foot off the gas pedal a little there, and uh, I don't expect them to be doing that this time around. I think they want to go for perfection or at least as close to it as they can get now and try and close this thing out with a 6-1 and head to map number two. Absolutely. It looks like uh, we're frozen here. Let me see if I can... My feed's not frozen, but the OBS is frozen, so let me see if I can get that sorted here while the prep phase is going.
So this uh, this mirror setup upstairs inside a theater, a very common defense as they have electric go kitchen service, a bomb site we haven't seen thus far, uh, and we haven't actually seen it since the qualifiers on coastline. I think we saw a coastline game earlier on in the um, EU broadcast. I can't remember if that was Monday or Wednesday. They all kind of blend together over time but a strong roam clear coming up from dexterity here as you have exo and yaga the ash and the ying trying to press in onto this mirror inside of theater a nitro just gonna be a little preemptive and uh fall short of exo who was pressed up right against the bathroom wall evaded the nitro perfectly and now lots of shots going back and forth across the courtyard top side into the immediate hallways the aviation with that ump trying to get a lucky headshot from outside there is i believe sipping on oj as the thatcher holding flank I don't know why you'd put him in that situation, but nonetheless, Dexterity uh, electing to do so. And now halfway through the round, no picks on the board, still a 5v5. It's not a lot of progression onto site for Dexterity. Candela's going to be flying out. The Nitro not going to land. Exo will shut down Rudy. And that's the first kill on the board for Dexterity. 80 seconds left. Flashbangs flying out from Yaga. He's going to be blinding the bandit, but somehow RTC able to look away from the flashbang and secure the kill. Leveling up Mancat now in a 4v4. A minute five. Sipping on OJ through the wall. Drops RTC from inside of Hookah. Chef coming in for the support. Pressing into Billiards. And now Chef taking an angle in towards Luggage. Hyper going to drop Nyx downstairs. You still have Aviation topside. 4v2 advantage for Dexterity. A 4v1 as I say that. Hyper drops Houghton. And he gets let up in the backside. But Aviation unable to secure the kill. Now he's alone against four. 40 seconds. Sight control surrendered. Sprang through the ejected mirror. Drops Exo. The chef has the diffuser inside his sight. He's getting droned out now. And Aviation going to retreat to security hallway. Going through the long flank all the way around as the plant does get down inside of A-bomb. Holding for the flank as they do with the rotation to Sunrise right underneath the default cams. I believe it's Hyper. No, sorry, it's Chef. And you do have one at the top of Cool Vibe Stairs. And that is exactly who dispatch Aviation. Sipping on OJ, Grim, two in the round after he was in that flank hold. Like I said, he's a, a very good fragger for Dexterity. And he does his job 2 AT in that round in Dexterity, looking like they have life. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And that's exactly what Dexterity needed to do. And I'll tell you what, it's really great that they started showing these signs of life before Hydra managed to get on match point. Because that getting on match point, that's just like if I lose one round, there's just no letting up. I have to win every single round for five rounds straight. Now they're just going to need to win four out of the next, or I'm sorry, well, I mean, if they do get on match point, they got to win five out of the next six rounds. Either way, at this point, Dexterity still has a chance to close the map or close the yeah close the map out without even having to go to overtime at all. But obviously, that's a very 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 tall order, so we'll have to wait and see if that's even remotely possible. If there's a team that can do it, I venture to say Dexterity would be that team. Absolutely. So, like, when you go to the blue bar and sunrise bar, so. Uh... Looks like Hydra are very averse to the top floor. They don't want to uh, hold uh, the top side at all. They want to play with that roam game upstairs, and they, uh, they're they electing to stay downstairs. Yes, indeed. So they will go to Blue Bar and Sunrise Bar. We talked about it a little bit before. And... Uh, Dexterity not able to find any success at the beginning has now really turned the game around. Sorry, folks, for the uh, moment of time where you had a graphic on the stream. We had to get the stream uh, basically refreshed, but uh, not as many demons, a little gremlins, rather, as we had at the very beginning. So they will cast off, castle off, rather, the little entrance door at the bottom of Hookah Stairs there. Um, very interesting because, you know, the attackers should kind of pile in and surprise so we'll have to wait and see if that is going to end up being a benefit or a detriment to the defense here. Uh, they as... lost their mirror facing into blue bar as well. Twitch drone was able to come in and grab that. Yeah, absolutely. So the castle will get blown to smithereens. So bullets will come back through there. Hyper decides to rotate off of it. They're going to plant one attacker in there just in case somebody decides to run out and some upstairs control now under the... Droning of the attackers. Aviation will get killed number one with that UMP-45 under the head of EXO. And that will be the one attacker, I believe, that was sitting there in the little closet. And he will just hold a tight angle there. Meanwhile, Twitch just trying to look through a couple of very tight angles. 
Not sure if he's going to see the feet of the defender down below. But a very slow attack now coming in. As somebody was in Hookah Valk waiting for him. A very patient game she was playing. And she now will drop down because her teammate opened the hatch. A very good job to get out of there. Get the kill and get out while people still think you're in there. Yago Grenade, these cool vibe stairs, not finding anybody, but alerting the defenders of his potential rotate down. Sipping on OJ will get a headshot onto Rudy. And that will be three, or the first kill on any of the defenders. Only three attackers left and only a minute left to go, Flynn. I'm in a deep 3v4 for dexterity. They're going to have to uh, work a little bit harder to secure this round. It's not looking as good as last time. Uh, trying to work their way top down. They've done a good job of clearing out that roamer, but Nick's able to drop Hyper uh, off of some poor droning or just not waiting for a drone as Hyper getting a little aggressive looking through the kill holes in the floor and forgetting about the room he was in. Now all four defenders stacked on side of sight awaiting this push. It's 35 seconds count down on the board. Yaga checking for courtyard and any kitchen room. Sipping on OJ coming through office and Chef coming courtyard. All stretched out. All three attackers on different sides of the board. Aviation going to cut down. Sipping on OJ. He tries to come through the office door. Yaga going to trade it back onto RCT. Sprays and towards oh. and Chef with a TK onto Yaga. It's all up to Chef alone. And Hot and Cold will drop on the SMG 11. We are on match point. Well, I mean, they were doing fantastic. The round, even the round that they lost here has been a lot, lot closer than the previous rounds have been. At least the opening four rounds have been for Dexterity. So, Hydra now on match point, just like you said. And should they win this round, or should they win in any of the next three rounds, which all they have to do is win one map in the next three rounds to finish this out, without having to go into overtime, uh, Dexterity might have found at least a little bit of a foothold to come into the next map, which will be Border. I feel like Border is going to be a much stronger map for Dexterity. Um, it's a map that's more often practiced by all teams. It's more universally uh, selected in comp as compared to Coastline, which, like I said, is a little more situational. Certain teams play it, certain don't. Um, and defaults alone aren't going to really win you any games on, on the coastline. You do have to um, to get a little creative with it, but it's the teams that overextend themselves that often, often find themselves in, uh, in disadvantageous positions as well. It's a fine balance on coastline, and uh, it looks like Hydra have figured out exactly what they need to do to be successful in this map carry that 5-2 lead currently uh, a little bit of an op swapping out as well no ash being part on the board on the side of dexterity looks like a hot breach onto the kitchen window immediately as there's a castle barricade on the kitchen window stopping them he gets breached open by a breach charge and now some fire coming into the kitchen trying to catch any defenders rotating in and out yep so 30 seconds off the board not too much time they're gonna kind of poke around the outside of the map until they decide what best route or what the best route to take is into the building. You know, every time that Dexterity has has uh, attacked that I've seen so far, they've been pretty spread out. Uh, so Exo will get the opening kill. He'll hop in, see a hole in the floor, shoot down through it. Nobody will connect, but he'll keep uh, the defenders below at bay so he can move on to uh, or to a spot with a little bit more safety there in VIP. Some. Some shotgun holes being opened up in the ceiling by Houghton as a Candela goes out elsewhere on the map, probably to try and catch a Roamer off guard. Also, Yaga getting in a little bit of a gunfight here down the hallway. Aviation gonna get stunned out by the lifeline of Zofia Rudigi and be able to gun down Yaga as he tries to come in through the theater door. He's got one on either side of him, launching him out. A nitro cell. Exo will take the life of Rudy, and Aviation will trade onto Sippin' on OJ and go for the rotation back downstairs towards site. Nick, sorry, Hyper gonna be taking down hot and cold. Aviation all the way back onto site, gonna be re-barricading the kitchen window. And as I said, that Nick's at a sliver of health. 5 HP going for a long rotation down the security hallway back towards Lambo. And a double roam clear topside still finishing up their work. Both defenders have uh, come back close to site. The Knicks hiding in the main lobby waiting for anyone to come through the foyer. And Aviation alone on site trying to weather the storm. Yeah, so full control seemingly of the top floor. There is one defender over on the south side upstairs hanging out by the stairs. 
Hyper will end his life, and Exo holding a angle through the open wall will get Aviation rotating between the two bomb sites. And Dexterity now, three to five. It started off four to zero, so now they're starting to move a little bit forward. You know, I said it's a little bit more difficult when you're on when your other when your opponent is on match point. You have multiple maps to win, multiple rounds to win, but. It's not impossible, and Dexterity's just taking the first step. Hydra going to be looking and going back to Blue Bar Sunrise Bar. I'm a little surprised by that pick, honestly. Um, yes, they just won it previously, but they have also lost the site. Um, I'm intrigued by uh, by them not opting to head topside at all on Coastline. I mean, you think about uh, any kind of default setups on Coastline, you think Penthouse Theater is, is your go-to. Yeah. Uh, and they seemingly have other opinions on that. They want to uh, stay downstairs. And Blue Bar Sunrise Bar, arguably the least picked site. And yet it's seemingly become their primary. They ran it first, and they're going to continue running it. Uh, they're going to have to be wary of Hyper's Twitch run, though. They lost that mirror facing into Blue Bar very early on in the round, like about five seconds into action phase. Um, they have a good setup on it. It's a pretty standard setup, honestly. Uh, and I do like the fact that they are utilizing that mirror topside uh, inside of Hookah looking into billiards. Yeah, it's uh, a different setup than we saw Dexterity when they oh, brought it down. Time. When they, they brought it, it down. Huh? They aren't doing the mirror inside of Hookah this time. They're oh, okay. They're opting to uh, look into billiards. Well, I was just going to say that they the fact that they even brought a mirror versus Dexterity's defense on the same side without a mirror. And yeah, you touched on that normally you haven't seen it, but somehow, for some reason, I don't know why, as of late, we've been seeing a lot of blue bar, a lot of sunrise, and not just by one or two teams, but by more teams that aren't doing it. So an angle being held here up through the hatch with a defender watching down. I'm not sure if they got some sort of information or if they hear the footsteps, of, the footsteps above, but a very cautious uh, angle there that he's holding, and for good reason, as there was a defender there. They will push into the office and down the security hallway, working a little bit closer towards this site. Flashbang coming out from Yaga. Exo gonna start things off with a double kill, dropping Nyx in RTC topside. So he's going for that. Oh, sorry, that was downstairs. Rudy gonna refrag it though against the ACOG, still winning that battle from inside kitchen delivery. Got one tucked away inside the sunrise window, waiting for the attacker placed outside of the blue bar window. Trying to go for this peak. It's aviation. The castle he's laying prone, not going for the aggression. He really should at this point try and level up man count. Thermite wall going to be opened up by Chef into Blue Bar. The Mira again has been ejected either by a Twitch run or a straight bullet. And now they have the ability to start aggressing into Blue Bar. Chef going to be slowly moving in with Diffuser. Hot and cold and launching out a Toxic Babe in behind Blue Bar. Not going to be landing on its target. As Chef's going to try and drop plant with 80 seconds left on the board. Hot and cold launching out another smoke canister, but the plant will go down. Hot and cold coming in will take down Chef, but he's alone as Hyper drops Aviation. Trying to just stick the defuse inside the smoke. Yaga hears this. Going to be rushing in, what? but Hot and Cold gets off and takes him down. But sip it on OJ through the courtyard. Destroyed wall into Blue Bar will save the round as hot and cold. Looked like he might have had a chance there. Uh, wow. He pulled up and des that's That is the power of the SMG-11. Uh, so many bullets so fast. And uh, what a great job to get that double kill. But being solo, he tried to go for the plant. Just couldn't do it. What are you going to do? 1v3 with the diffuser down. Fantastic job. at Dexterity, after losing the first four rounds, ladies and gentlemen, Okay, Hydra not only came in and won the first four, four rounds. I don't know if you're late to it, but if so, later on, you need to go back and watch this VOD because they won the first four rounds. And in those first four rounds, Dexterity had a total of four kills. Their entire team had a total of four kills. They destroyed Dexterity in the first four rounds. And now here we are, five to four. Dexterity just needs to win one more round to bring it back into overtime. I, I can't even believe I'm saying this. Dexterity really dug deep to make it this far, and we'll have to we'll see if they have what it takes to make it just that, that inch further to bring it into OT. Not only is it just the play, it's the mental fortitude to be able to survive that 4-0. You know, you think about the old ESL rules and the old comp rules. 4-0 was a death sentence back in the day. Now with these new rules, I guess you can call the 5-0 the death sentence. Um, yep. You're pretty much dead at that point. You're just you're on life support. 
the 4-0 is still a hard scoreline to look at in these settings, and the ability to stay strong with your morality, with uh, with staying strong within the team, not letting comps deteriorate into pure garbage and just blaming. To be able to stick together as a team and stick through this, that's the real, that's the insanity part about this with Dexterity, able to fight back and claw their way from the grave. Yep. So Ash missing the soft wall with their Ash grenade. Yaga will, what oh my just God. happened? Yaga will sledge the wall, or I'm sorry, Exo will sledge the wall. Yaga will get a two piece. No, it was Yaga that, yeah, yeah, the sledge and get a double kill. It, it all happened so fast, I'm still trying to get my bearings here. But just like that, a three for one trade, only the Ying being lost, and still two minutes left to go here. Dexterity poised now to make it into overtime. Oh, okay, uh, Aviation gonna try and level things up, bring things back in the favor of Hydra, try and close this out, he drops Yaga. It was the sledge going on a tear. You still have RTC on the roam game, top side alone. Two attackers pushing from Lambo lobbies, the third one droning for them. They're all pressing the main floor currently as we approach the halfway point in the round. RTC still top side can do some damage coming on a delayed flank as two attackers have stacked themselves inside a kitchen with Chef the Thermite prone droning. Sorry, that was hyper on the drone. You don't typically see the ash going for the droning. But uh, nonetheless, she gets off, breaches open the castle barricade inside of Kitchen. Now RTC going for this timed flank. 70 seconds on the board. He's going to have to time this perfectly when they all congregate outside of sight, or else he's going to get refragged easily. Hammer's still up, checking for info, but none such info downstairs. You've actually got Hyper holding the flank now on top of uh, L stairs. Yep, still definitely not over yet and an engagement about to happen catching uh, uh, ash off guard rtc will eliminate or not take any damage so it's now 2v2 and perhaps not droning is gonna really hurt rtc will get a kill on sipping on oj and they're almost assured ot is now slipped away aviation will get the kill on the decks and hydra after almost having decks come back on them will somehow manage to strip that last round away from Dexterity and take map number one on Kosa. You talk about mental fortitude. 2v5 after dropping three attackers in the first, what was that, 20, maybe 30 seconds of the round. Aviation and RTC deserve a gold medal for that performance in the last round there. And uh, wow, map number one going in the favor of Hydra on coastline. I completely forget the second map. I believe it's border. It is border. Um, it's border. I imagine things will go a little bit differently, but what a wonderfully played back and forth game. And uh, I'm getting the message now that we'll be heading to a short break uh, in between maps. So uh, stick with us, ladies and gentlemen. I think we have all the tech issues finally figured out finally and, uh, we'll see you on the other side of the break thank you yeah we'll be back in just a minute folks stick around
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for the little break there, but uh, when nature calls, apparently some of the teams had to take a little short one. But we are back. I My name is Ty Tangles, and I am joined tonight by Mr. Flynn. And what do you think about that first map? 4-0 on the side of Hydra. And then all of a sudden, it's 5-4 the next time I look at it. I touched on it in the middle of the game. It's a wonderful uh, display of mental fortitude on both sides there to be able to bring back a 4-0 to a competitive match. And then um, as well, the 2v5 by RTC and Aviation. Uh, both of those sides played wonderfully on the attack. I think you're just at a massive disadvantage already being back up against the wall uh, down 4-0 or sorry, down 4-1 uh, heading into your turn on the attack. Um, I've never really considered Coastline to be favored in on one side or the other. It really is about how the teams decide to play it, um, how much experience and practice you have on it, um, especially with how viable all those bomb sites are. Like we saw every site except for Hookah on that map, and Hookah is also a decently viable map or site and comp. Um, how you choose to play dictates if you will win or lose on Coastline, and that is... Uh, Something similar can be said for Border, but it is much more uh, rigid in the way it plays. Uh, no, never mind. No, we're going bathroom tellers. Um, okay. Every, everything I say does not matter. Everything, Don't listen to me. Everything yeah. he says applies to the round that they picked that bombsite. Uh, yep. But meanwhile, you can see there at the bottom right of your screen, Blackbeard, Finca, Vigil, and Valkyrie banned for this map. New ops being banned for every map in this new format. And for those of you that are just joining us and are scratching your heads at what exactly is going on in this new format, uh, if you've played TMs before, which I'm sure a lot of you out there have, we go five rounds on whatever it is, whatever side you decide to be on before switching to the other side. So five consecutive defense and or attack rounds. Should we make it into overtime? It is a win by two and you swap every two rounds. So here we go on map number two, Hydra taking map number one almost convincingly not if dexterity could help it but they just couldn't hold on on that last round and the uh, hydra finished it up taking map number one coastline so here we are border if we need to we'll go into oregon for map three 30 seconds in the attackers making their approach to the building and here we see a blitz coming out from hydra Aviation playing that blitz, getting aggressive into armory with a flanking. I believe it was the Yang of Rudy Cat coming about, or I don't think he has the cat in the end of his name anymore, but uh, nonetheless, it'll be Nyx dropping, uh, or Nyx falling, sorry, to Exo, the Ella. Correct on the operator coming in behind, and now oh. they fall past each other in the window. <laughs> the melee comes out, Exo will fall, RTC will grab another onto Yaga, a Nitro goes errant and will not land on its target. A minute deep, we've already seen three frags on the board, an aggressive roam clear doing its job coming out from Hydra, but as I say that, sipping on OJ laying in the corner, will dispatch of Aviation. And get a second one down onto Rooney, this entire round's gonna be done in about a minute and a half, an aggressive peek in towards Metal Half Wall. Hyper unable to land his shots in a common theme so far today. And now Twitch Run coming up to try and get rid of this mirror. will get dispatched immediately by Hyper. More pre-fires coming back and forth inside of both teams. Both missing their target. The pistol oh. coming up, but Hyper lands the shot onto Hot and Cold. It's all to RCT. He will fall to Hyper. Finally hitting those shots, proving me wrong. And Dex there, and he went the first round in about 90 seconds. I have to say, I love this setup from Dexterity. I've never seen it before. I love the pick. I love the setup. I love how they opened the pill box, inviting the attackers. Come on in, guys. We even opened it up for you. Hey, we want you all to come in this direction. Come on in. They did a fantastic job, and it worked perfectly. They got a little bit aggressive. That Ella did not have to run out, jump through the window, got knifed. The other one got killed. It, it was looking like it was falling apart, but there were so many roamers upstairs that Hyper and OJ were able to fill in those gaps, and they finished the round. The, the attacking squad played right into their hands. Their setup worked perfectly. It won't work again. I can guarantee you that, but what a great setup, and the the I tell you what, opening that pillbox wall and inviting those attackers in, I mean, it was executed flawlessly. If the attackers would have done their research and noticed that, hey, 
Not only is this a semi-easy site to take, but four people are off-site. They might have done it differently. Well, well played from Dexterity, and I'm glad that overly aggressive Ella play didn't, you know, put a wrench in their gears. I can't remember who the teams were, but in EU Pro League, we saw a team consistently going back to uh, bathroom tellers as not necessarily the primary defense, but their secondary. Um, and they had actually won that round strictly because the attacking teams consistently rushed into sight and got slaughtered from above. The top control was necessary to clear out every single time. And once again, it did look like with that hatch control, even if Hydra had rushed into sight, it wouldn't have gone well with how well they were set up with the reinforcements Ooh. and the hatch open and kill holes in the floor. Shots narrowly missing the head of Exo as he gets extremely aggressive onto this half opened up armory wall. I'm not sure how Chef is still alive there, managing to play ring around the, the rosy. Uh, Blitz pushed up all the way here. They see the mirror, so his teammates haven't quite pushed up so aggressively. But he'll get some hip fires down. A lot of bullets hitting him right in the shield, but that ain't going to matter. That shield is impenetrable. As Nitro Cell will come out and take about three-fourths of his health, Rudy will get killed number one onto Exo in what it seems like CCTV. And the attackers all stacked up here outside of pillbox right now. More shots from the hip fire of aviation coming out as he's lost a lot of damage to that nitro that landed directly in front of him. Another nitro will rip from behind the mirror. Oh no, it was a delayed sound. I was gonna say there should only be one nitro on the board. Oh no, it was Hyper. Hyper has the other nitro, he keeps ripping it and setting aviation back, delaying this even further. We approach the midpoint in the round. There's no progress here from Hydra. If they did get that initial pick, now they've all stalled outside as an aggressive peek from Hyper gets shut down by Hot and Cold. Now they have that two-man advantage. Chef now fills it on the mirror. Looks like he wants to go for the aggressive peek. Oh. He gets displaced by the impact below by Nyx. The mirror gets popped. Hot and gets the kill. The Candelas come flying out, rushing into sight as Rudy, dropping all the Candelas. He just misses the bandit beside him. Sorry, that was the smoke. Yaga will fall. It's about to sip it on OJ in a 1v5. Flanking CCTV drops RTC. Spraying wildly grabs another one. There was a thermite of hot and cold. So as the blitz to deal with, a flank comes in. He knifes the claymore, but prone at his feet was Nyx laying inside a break room. Doing a good job to try and bring that back with sipping on OJ, but everyone on site fell at behest of their aggression. Yeah, that's exactly right. It was the aggression that made him fell, fall apart. Their attackers have to come to you. You're doing a fantastic job of holding it. I mean, the shield, sure, the shield can push up a little bit, right? And, yeah, it's nice to take the shield out, but it's a little bit extreme to send so many bodies after one guy, especially when all of his teammates are kind of holding angles there. And uh, I disagree with those two peaks, one by the Mira, one by Hyper on that bandit there in the closet. And, well, actually, I guess the Mira got pushed out by the by the impact yeah, grenade. So that Chef didn't have a choice. Yeah, so that was kind of a, uh, you know, it's an okay sort of deal. But if you're going to play that position, you got to be... You gotta have that that hatch reinforced, so you know, stand on the hatch, whatever you have to do, move backwards instead of into the sight of the enemy team. So heading back to armory lockers once again, our dexterity. They're not trying to pull their bathroom teller strat out of their back pocket again. They're looking to uh, stay steady on the armory lockers, as even though it was a one v five situation, I guess they feel like maybe there's something they could tweak, which the first. Uh, thing they have tweaked is not leaving the half of the armory wall soft and opening it up. They've elected to fully reinforce it this time around. A little late on the archives reinforcements, which is where four attackers have spawned on the east side. I think they may want to be going for a straight office take this time around. Yeah, a couple of donuts still two rounds deep into this game on the side of Dexterity. Uh, Sip and Hyper both doing a lot of work, but they're going to need their teammates' help if they want to keep this... Uh, this uh, a little bit of late game advantage that they've had in the last five or six rounds between the end of last map and the beginning of this map going. They're going to need those teammates' help. So a very interesting castle door kind of leaves this uh, northwestern balcony, uh, I guess, a little bit more traipsable if you're the attackers, although an impact grenade could dispatch it. Uh, Exo still with the Ella yet again in a very aggressive angle. Will not get seen by the drone. Even the second drone passes him by. Finally, he'll get seen. And he will decide to run away, just narrowly escaping some bullets coming through the window. He's just going to kind of hang out in this area. The sandwich area is not reinforced. He'll throw some bullets out through the window and somehow into a pre-fire. 
get RTC right in the head. He'll pick out and get another one. He'll stay at the window, trade some bullets, get some damage down onto Rudy, but Rudy will finally finish him off. A great job by Ella to get that double kill. Only a minute and a half left to go. Perfect balance of aggression and a proper read there from Exo. Grabs two and almost the third, completely stalling out this attack once again. It was the aggression last time around from Dexterity that cost them the round uh, when they had a proper stall out happening. So now it'll be up to Hydra to try and advance past this office hold. There's the Blitz coming down main hallway towards Metal. He's free, or trying to bust open a castle barricade by hand, sprinting into the hallway, but sipping on OJ cuts him off at the pass at the top of Metal stairs. Yaga taking a lot of damage from inside of Fountain, but also trading a lot of damage onto Rudy, and that's who will fall next to the hands of sipping on OJ. Now a flank coming from the Jaeger. In behind the Blitz, trading lots of shots. Hot and will drop Yaga. Aviation takes down sipping on OJ. So he was blind by the flash shield. Now it's down to a 2v2. Aviation losing a lot of health. 45 seconds on the board. Diffuser in hands of Hotton. I'm not actually sure where he's gone off to. He's inside of radio desk right now. Going to be breaching open the archives wall. Sniper not in a position to bandit trick that. Stuck in behind the bookshelf inside of archives. Still, I believe, a couple of nitro cells left in the hands of the defenders. Not sure if Mira still has hers, but I know that Bandit has his. So they will hang out. No. So Mira has hers. That's for sure. Chef will get a kill onto Aviation. That's a shield gone. Hyper will finish off the other one. Dexterity going tit for tat now with Hydra. Very, very good opening frags there by Exo. The Ella hanging around a radio window and uh, getting extremely aggressive. If you get droned out by two separate drones in that position, you should never be in a position to then secure two frags and almost the third. Uh, it was an amazing shot onto the Twitch, but uh, you really you need to be stacking at that point to make sure there's no one in that window either send the third drone in open up the window entirely try and dissuade him from taking that aggressive peek because you almost lost your entire roster to that one window opening up the window entirely absolutely i mean they had the people there to cover him, but they just weren't all covering at the same time from different angles and a great job i mean he almost even got the kill on rudy there at the end on that ying and ying just managed to secure the kill on him so fantastic job. Very similar, uh, or actually, I was gonna say a similar setup. Here comes the bathroom and the tellers yet again. So we'll see how they decide to set this up if they're gonna do it a little differently than they did last time. Fair to the first round, Exo swapped off the yellow and has gone to the Legion this time. I imagine that's trying to dissuade Aviation from just bum rushing them upstairs again. And uh, last time it was Nyx with the Ella lifeline all the way from, um, I don't even know what the hell to call that. Is Radio Tower? Something on the west side. The big tower where Glass always goes cut off rotation between CC and Armory Door. Uh, but he had launched a, an impact with that lifeline all the way into the Armory Wall that was left soft. It's been left soft once again, and we do have a triple stack right outside. But it looks like this time, all of Hydra are looking to go for a downstairs rush into objective, and they have to be aware of that hatch control and all the kill holes in the floor. Yeah, absolutely. I knew that they wouldn't fall into the trap that that the uh, defense left for him the, for them the first time. But like you said, they still if the vertical control, control isn't contested, they can still look way down. <laughs> Cheeky little little uh, Claymore spot actually ends up getting shot. Uh, unfortunate for him as uh, the attackers start to push west to east here on the first floor. Some drones coming out. No contention upstairs as of yet, although Ying appears to be heading towards, and there is Osfia hanging out there on East Stairs. So a little bit, but not nearly the full team rush right into him. Amira gets opened up somewhere else on the map as well. So the Twitch drone doing a little bit of work. And Zofia now approaching the B bomb site through the window. Gonna lay prone and get an angle upstairs through one of those teller's windows. It's all five attackers on the main floor. Aviation getting flanked now by Exo on the left hand side. Sprays with that ejected mirror by Chef. Aren't gonna land on the backside of Asi Aviation, but Nyx will be down from above. Chef will take down Hot and Cold as well as the Thermite off the board. Taking a lot of damage down to about one HP. Candela's come flying in, but more support from above through these kill holes again as 
all of dexterity in a perfect position to hold this out an impact nade being launched out now the twitch drone oh. get it down chef will it be able to finish him off is is going to be rtc's twitch drone finishing him as the blitz of asian had rushed in rudy will fall now Blitz has secured himself a beachhead with the diffuser, but RTC will fall. He's alone inside of the bathroom stall, now against four, trying to reload while looking skyward. Exo will rip him up as he hides inside the stall. Nowhere to go. And that's the second consecutive victory on bathroom tellers for dexterity. Yes, indeed. They're completely different than we saw the first round. Up 3-1 now, dexterity. And uh, Hydra, again, not falling into the trap upstairs fell into a very different trap downstairs. Sophia getting killed from that hatch to start it off. And uh, from there, it was just the, the attackers falling apart left and right. So, and, and they did a fantastic job. The defense did a fantastic job. A lot of them dropped down and, you know, gave their, their teammates backup on site once they realized that pretty much the entire attacking squad was downstairs. I mean... I've touched on this in plenty of different games before. Border is a map that you have to play multi-level. You cannot, I think, I think there's a, a pretty good clip of Intero and Kix having a back and forth about how to attack a site. Uh, I think it was actually the game I was referen referencing earlier with a, an EU team constantly going to uh, bathroom tellers. You need to clear the floor opposite of site. You, you can't just rush in with all that top control. There was no way they were getting through it just by steamrolling in. There were too many kill holes. There was too much support. There was too much utility. You cannot just rush your way into sight and think you're going to be fine with all of that opportunity to shoot down to the floor. It did not go well, as they learned. Um, but I think if you're going to be trying to attack that top four hold with so much office and um, archives presence... Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> okay, hello. Uh, with all that Iron presence sight. offside... You really do need to be taken from the office side instead. You have a perfect trip wall to thermite open. You have that radio window. You can pressure from AC. Take it like an office take and then move down. So a very quick push in by Aviation. We'll find somebody in CCTV. Forcing him to cross, unfortunately, for the attackers. They didn't have anybody to cut off rotation. He'll run right back. So free fire going through the soft wall. We'll get Exo about half of his health gone. But he manages to go back to safety. And fortunately for them... They also have a dock. So Exo will continue his uh, sprinting around the map like he's been doing so far all round. And some pillbox control will be taken here by the attacking squad. So again, Aviation trying to apply some pressure. They do have the mirror ejected inside a small office this time instead of having to contest that as well. RTC to get the first frag. Aviation gets one into the blitz as well. Down to a 5v3, dispatches the nitro cell. Concurrently, as it is, Chef stuck in behind half wall. He's got a crossfire to deal with from half wall in the ejected mirror. The dough could be phone calls coming out to add some more distraction. Twitch drawn at the feet of Chef will distract him long enough. He's gonna launch out a nitro and it's gonna take down Rudy as it flies through the breaching hole on the armory wall. Gonna turn off his cell phone now. Yaga trying to cover for any metal push and sipping on OJ still on a flank at the top of these stairs. Aggressive peek out here from Chef. Not going to land any bullets on the hot and cold. T backs away to safety and the Blitz of Aviation is rushed in and secured position in behind half wall. He rushes in and Yaga misses all of his shots, allowing his teammate to fall. Yaga will trade it back onto Aviation though as the Blitz goes down. The plant dropping in behind metal half wall behind Locker. Sipping on OJ grabs Nyx down to a 2v2. A minute left on the board. Hot and Cold is elected to get off the plant and wait for the flank as he just misses sipping on OJ, crossing against that half-destroyed CCTV wall. Yaga will turn off his cell phone. Sight control still for Hot and Cold, at least on the opposite side of the lockers. And he's got to worry about sipping on OJ coming for that flank in behind. RTC secured himself inside the small office, or sorry, in behind half wall. Now RTC is in the small office, hot and cold behind the half wall, waiting for this flank. They're waiting it out, but RTC with a wonderful shot with the SMG-12, leaving it all up to Yaga. The plant now going down by hot and cold. Going to be successful here as Yaga cannot get in place to stop it. He's got to worry about RTC inside a small office, first looking through the window and the metal off grate of metal detectors. Spraying in towards... Or not looking to be spraying towards. Sorry, the Elamine going to go off and disorient RTCs. It's the perfect time for Yaga to strike, but he elects not to. He's holding his position, wasting his time. Now he's going for the ADS peak in behind the bomb. Pulls out the Magnum, trying to go for some high noon frags. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> RTC shuts him down. Yaga falls. Hydra taken. So Hydra stops the bleeding after losing what I believe to be three consecutive. No, actually, two consecutive. 
They, they lost one, won one, lost one, lost one. So to bring it back to 3-2 because a 4-1 is severely worse than a 3-2. So great job for them getting the bomb down, covering it just fine. And now we're in round number six, which means we will be flipping sides and we will be watching Hydra attempt to defend and Dexterity attempt to attack. So the bathroom tellers change up seemingly uh, the smart decision. Um, I kind of have to lay those defensive wins at the feet of Hydra more than anything, just playing it improperly twice in a row. Um, it was a wonderful, it was honestly two wonderful rounds at the hands of Dexterity. Um, just not a site you're supposed to win, honestly. It was, it was a good game plan. It was a good setup. Just, again, not one of those sites you're supposed to win, but it can catch teams off guard. I'm really, really surprised they uh, they won the defense the second time around. I did not think Hydra were going to just rush site again. I thought they would probably go for a, a more effective roam clear from the east side. But nonetheless, now it's Hydra's turn to try and... Uh, try and close this thing out as they did win map number one on coastline 6-4 they're trying to end this thing and not have this go to a map number three which would be oregon and we'd have a fresh wave of bans uh for operators and we've seen dexterity throw the qualifiers they elected to ban mira leaving us some pretty interesting gameplay on oregon a lot yeah you know it's funny that you meant mentioned the off guard thing you know one of the reasons why we have a seven map map pool in ccs instead of the full nine like esl it's because a lot of these teams, you know, it's it, they can't make it their full-time job to play Siege like some of the pro teams that play nine maps. And so we want to give them the opportunity to familiarize their, their teams and themselves with, uh, you know, a more doable map lineup. And so when you do something like that, even though it's only week one, I expect to see a lot more off-kilter maps because the teams can get a little bit more acquainted with each of these maps you know, only having to learn seven as opposed to nine. And is coming up to try and stop a bandit trick. None such happening as the EMP cut down. The bandit charges on the wall, but Chef not in position to go for the breach just yet. Exo holding down the wall quite well. There's no one trying to get aggressive onto him just yet. He's holding things solo. Yaga comes in and fills him behind. We'll launch a smoke grenade in. Another EMP going off, even though Bandit of RTC had never gone in to replace the batteries. And now the breach coming out is Exo going to launch a second Candela. So that's his third Candela. That's all of the flashes gone midway through the round. And finally, Chef comes around as they wasted a lot of time waiting on their breach to pull up to the armory wall finally gets it opened up they still have to contest with this small office mirror that hot and cold is playing and looking to get more aggressive on yeah a lot of utility wasted i'm not sure if they should have maybe droned <laughs> in first to see that there was really nobody there to contest any sort of breach uh pulse playing underneath i was just thinking and there is the Thatcher, as a matter of fact, cutting off any rotation through that main door hall. I was seeing if they were going to send any attackers up underneath to try and uproot anybody behind that mirror window like they had done to them. A smoke will go and actually hit the wall that wasn't breached and go off kind of in between the door and the hole. He will get absolutely popped by the glass. Hyper will pick up one on the next. Yaga will get one and now full control of the A site in the hands of the attackers. Chef will get a team kill before Exo and Hyper get another kill each of their own and finish out the round for Dexterity 4-2 to two now. The second team kill Chef's had this game, I think he had one on Coastline as well. He did. He was alone in a 1 or a 2v3. He killed his teammate, left to do a 1v3 and got gunned. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to well, do? Nonetheless, 4-2 advantage in the favor of Dexterity now after a strong AWOL push that lost a lot of time waiting on that breach, lost a lot of utility for seemingly no reason, and yet the overwhelming amount of bodies, just the pure fragging force of that rush in uh, after they lost hot and cold to try to uh, redeploy a smoke grenade against the smoke grenade tossed by Glaz gets popped through the smoke and uh, then pushing through the AWOL was an easy take for the rest of Dexterity. They're two rounds away from sending this to map number three on Oregon and trying to, uh, again, bring back the deficit. We saw it on Coastline, bring back the 4-0 deficit, and uh, now they're down a map, and they're trying to bring it back and extend this game even further and ultimately try and get the win in this uh, when it seemed like, honestly, they were not going to be doing so well after the first uh, few rounds of the game. Yeah, you know, Hydra, again, I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream, but Hydra won second place in season two 
They're a very good, competent team, especially, you know, now that they got hot and cold on the team, which is just a stellar pro league fragger. But, you know, they came out and they were decimating Dexterity. There's no word that could be, you know, th th that's, that's the mildest I could put it. They were absolutely obliterating them. And then all of a sudden, Dexterity woke up and said, oh, wait, this isn't how we play. Turned it around, almost tied the game after going down 4-0. And, oh, unfortunate, the Mira in the closet gets opened up by the Twitch drone. The Twitch doing her one and only job. If it do, if she does anything of the whole round, opening up that Mira is going to be huge. Either way, they had a little bit of that Hydra magic. But since then, we haven't seen it. So we're going to have to see if Hydra can maybe deep, you know, dig down and uh, find whatever it was that they had those opening four rounds on coastline. Be going for that A wall take because they do have that advantage of popping that mirror we talked about inside a small office. Hot and cold, not going to be playing it this time, but getting aggressive under the wall is Nick somehow surviving the myriad of shots even after that T95 was buffed in the most recent patch. Surviving those shots through the wall and able to evacuate. He's going to go for a reset inside of archives at the hands of Rudy as he gets down through the wall, smoking a inching life away from Yaga. At the hands of hot and cold, more candles coming out as the breach coming out as well from Chef, opening up that arca or sorry the armory wall. Exo grabs one, but Rudy and RTC trade it right back, and now a four v three advantage at the favor of Hydra. More pre fires coming out and rushing into a smoke, trying to knife it, seeing if anyone's trying to stick a plant inside the smoke grenade. Right in None such happening, and a peek around the corner by Hyper will drop RTC. So RTC, or Hyper rather, a beautiful shot on RTC. A little bit stalled out now. I'm not sure where his teammates are right at the moment, but a 3v3, still a minute left to work with, still plenty of time to make a decision. And I'm not sure if if Legion got reset and then got, you know, hurt a lot yeah, again. Did. Okay, but uh, he's not sitting pretty, but he is sitting in that little cheeky spot right up against the southern wall in the closet. And now the attackers seemingly making a rotate or maybe just watching their flank. Either way, they're just going to watch their backside a little bit. The Mira is open, but they have not committed to creeping inside and trying to go for a plant yet. I'm not sure if they have any drones left, but no droning going on. They're going to peek through the, the little window there. Thermite will get hit by a lesion, walk outside, pull it out. Only 30 seconds now. Time is running out. They're going to have to make a move quick. He will cross and get obliterated from Closet Hyper will trade him right back. And the Diffuser now sitting on the ground. The attackers will pull back out. Aviation will get one on Sippin' on OJ on the flank. And now it is only Hyper. Half health. Two full health defenders to deal with in only eight seconds. He'll go ahead, go ahead and decide to commit to the plant. He'll pull off the plant. He'll headshot Rudy. He turns around. He sees the Mira. He just misses the bullet. Has no choice but to stick it. An easy kill now for Mira. Just sees the, def or the, uh, the uh, Claymore, thankfully. And... Well, able is able to finish off this round for the Diffuser. Man, what a round. Oh, if you walked into that Claymore, I, I can't imagine the clips that would be coming out of that. Uh, thankfully, a wonderful flank job there by Aviation picking up both the frags. A wonderful, uh, wonderful awareness there from Hyper to get off the plant and take that aggression. And he almost turned around and removed Aviation as well as he ducked away inside, as I'm sure everyone in that Discord call was screaming at him to run and hide. There's only three seconds on the board. He was taking shots in the back. Uh, definitely the smart play. Almost a throw on both sides, honestly. Uh, I mean, Dexterity had the advantage there for so long outside that wall. They had Mira ejected. They just needed to drone and realize that Nyx was playing inside the small office looking through that ejected mirror. That would have been the easiest kill of Chef's life to walk in. He was about five HP laying down. Uh, you just take that advantage and pre-fire it, and you got a 3v2 advantage. Instead, they lose their man advantage. Uh, it gets immediately traded back out, but just that lack of a drone and a lot of stalling out outside that wall once again costs them the round, and we're, uh, we're one round away on behalf of Hydra from tying this thing up. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did. This uh, Both games that we've seen today have gone tit for tat. We've seen one overtime and we've seen two six fours as close as you can get to overtime without going into overtime. So, you know, great job so far by all the teams that we've seen today. Great job by Dexterity not to die on the other map, but are they going to have the wherewithal now to finish it up? They, they had the lead 3-1 at one point on this map. It is now 3-4. 
Hydra managing to get two for one. Still a deficit, but not a unremarkable feat to overcome a one round down deficit. So some East Stairs control and some CCTV control now coming out from Dexterity. Actually, one already in the hallway creeping into offices. I'm not sure what the defense has set up upstairs and what's waiting for them. RTC will kill Exo. So that's a Ying off the board. A lot of utility gone. Every time we see that Ying die so early in the round, we just want to shake our heads a little bit. Why is she being the first one to go in? Hyper now right outside the castle door in the main hallway. Start opening up a couple of holes here in the fountain to see if they can pick anybody. But a mirror looking right at her. Nyx will get the kill. Sip it on OJ will refrag it. I think that was actually from main hall rather. And so a minute and 47 left. Two attackers now dead. Only one defender dead. Now Yaga and Chef with the Fuser. Awkward decision as your only breach and defuser in hand are going to be going for a base or a bottom four Rome clear as I think this is Aviation on the Mira who has dropped down and in support of Hot and Cold the roaming smoke as well. Interesting decisions here from Hydra, but nonetheless they are working out as they have the man advantage. 80 seconds left. Sorry, no, the bomb site is workshop ventilation. What am I saying? Nonetheless, 75 <laughs> on the board. Hot and cold down to about one HP. A sliver of health in the back site of the bomb. Frag grenade going to be tossed out in the back. It's going to land just shy of hot and cold. I don't know how that didn't finish him off, but nonetheless, he survives. Aviation cuts down. Chef of Frag grenade going to be opening up the castle barricade into bathroom, alleviating the pressure. Yaga grabs hot and cold as he couldn't escape his death much longer. 52 seconds. Sipping on OJ and Yaga have to 2v3 this now. Reclaiming possession of the diffuser. Just barely as he's escaping those pre fires <laughs> by aviation coming up from the main doorway beside metal stairs. Yaga's pushed his way into the back of A bomb. He's, or sorry, he's still inside a bathroom. Rudy has gone up for the flank top side, looking down through the hatch, covering the rotation. Yaga going to be droning this to check for it. He gets shot immediately, giving away Rudy's position. But there's not a lot you can do about it. He fucks open the wall, taking oh! the shots, and what a wonderful angle. Yaga drops Rudy. He's got another one filling in. Another flick by Yaga. He drops down Aviation. It's off to uh, RTC now, alone. As Sight controls the fort, he's getting pinged out on drones. He's going for a teller's flank. Sipping on OJ, dropping the plant. Yaga waiting for the flank main hallway, but RTC is going bathroom. More pings coming out on that drone. He's staying in the bathroom hallway. Now he comes hallway, drops Yaga. Down to a 1v1. Full health on either side of the board. Sipping on OJ is actually planted inside a B bomb and gone all the way outside the ventilation window. Plant gets down inside a B. RTC searching for it, cannot find it. And Sipping on OJ holding on the right side of vent window. It's got to know there's at least a claymore out there. If not, Sabrano J holding a tight angle in the window. And now RTC going to try and bait him into peeking this. Hits for three hits, going for four. The spray's coming in. He's going to vault in. He tries oh to vault the window. Goodness. But RTC with the clutch. Drops Sabrano J. Will disable the diffuser. Hydra have tied things up. 4-4. Four, four. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, RTC nuts. I, I was almost debating whether or not he should pull off the diffuser. He did. Got the insane kill. He got in a great spot to start diffusing. Forced Sipping on OJ to vault through the window in panic, not knowing how long he had been diffusing for, even though if he kind of would have held a really tight angle, he would have seen him as he leaned forward. Either way, Sipping on OJ panicked, hopped in, and, and absolutely just ate bullets for doing it. Uh, what a clutch. What a fantastic job. And Hydra now are looking really good to try and take map number two and close the series out without having to go to a decider. Next two rounds could end it here. Unless we go to overtime for the second time this evening. I'm, uh... I'm wary of border overtime games. At least there's a mirror in play. Yeah. But uh, getting some PTSD <laughs> flashbacks thinking about OT on this map. Uh, so Chef and Rudy, uh, or sorry, Chef and Hot and Cold, surprisingly, actually. Uh, Hot and playing, I think it was mostly Breach and Smokes. So he's playing some more support roles than fragging roles, but uh, you'd think maybe Hot and would be having a better game than he is currently. Uh, sipping on OJ, like I talked about, he's playing those support roles. You know, he's playing Thatcher. Um, and he's playing Jaeger on defense as well, so he is in a fragging role on defense. But he's still he's holding his own on attack. You know, it's it's interesting to see them put him in that uh, in that support role of a Thatcher on attack instead of maybe uh, maybe electing to put him like an Ash or a Zofia, something with a run clear or a lot of damage potential. Yeah, I agree. So if we do, and oh, Nick's just barely escaping as the front door gets opened up, getting damaged. 
just going to say, if we do go into overtime, at least you'll be a little bit more comfortable. Exclamation point chair in chat. And yes, Flynn, that is a thing. It's a thing? <laughs> it is a thing. Exclamation point chair. I'm about 80% sure that it's a uh, one of our little Discord commands. So look out in three minutes when this airs for the chat to oh. go nuts. But anyway. God. Yep. Uh, but anyway, here we are, tied 4-4, about 45 seconds off the board. A little bit of damage down on one of the roamers onto Nyx. But not uh, enough to really make too much of a difference. Some shots will go up through the floor. Yaga will continue the crazy streak with that buck. He'll get one. He'll get shot up, though. Only about 25, 30% health left for him as he decides to rotate out and wait for some of his teammates to watch some of these newly found angles he's opening up in the ceiling. Sipping on OJ, playing down, watching the rotation, chucking the Thatcher grenade up on that pillbox wall like he's been doing the whole time. Waiting for his teammates to open up the pillbox and open up the pillbox. They will do a smoke grenade getting tossed out early. And I'm not sure what Aviation was doing, walking right out of the hole, but an easy kill for Chef. The uh, <laughs> glass will sprint in for some unknown reason. An easy kill for Smoke. And now some lives just being given away. Hyper will get one up through the floor. So now a 2v4, only Smoke and Lesion left. Both of them a little bit of health gone versus four hungry attackers. Sippum will find one, De or Hyper will find the other one. And now match point for Dexterity, 5-4. What happened? <laughs> Throwing away lives on both sides of the board. It's somehow, and there was a botched frag grenade that would have killed the Twitch there too. Yep. <laughs> Okay, okay. Stop trying to throw everybody. Okay, let's uh, let's bring that back in. But uh, yeah, dexterity on match point. Try to extend this to map number three, which would be Oregon if necessary. If Hydra come away with the defensive win on Vent Workshop, which I am aware is the site this time, uh, we'll be heading into overtime, which if anyone needs a refresher and didn't catch the 32 round game, is unlimited. You must win by a difference of two rounds to win the game in overtime. If you guys keep winning one, then losing one, win one, losing one. If you lose one, then win the next two, just because you won two in a row does not mean you won the game. You have to win by a score difference of two. That is correct. It can go on for a while. As we've been there firsthand. Yes. So, uh, yeah, a very interesting last round. And I can't help but think, like, how good would Dexterity be if they drone every once in a while? Like, the Glass ran in and got obliterated by somebody just standing still ADSing at half wall. And, and, the, and he, not only did he sprint, he didn't sprint through regular smoke, he sprinted through toxic smoke. Like, what are you doing? You should be ADSing, creeping, checking your angles through pillbox, covering your teammates. You should not be the, the entry fragger with Glaz. And uh, he really paid for it. And luckily, his teammates were able to bail him out of that situation. Um, so yeah, it, it was an interesting round. Tons of mistakes on both sides. And, uh, you know, we started this game late because of some technical difficulties. We went almost into overtime map number one. We're almost in overtime map number two. And you have to think at this point, if there are some, I don't know, some, some, uh, you know, getting worn down sort of issues by these teams. Yeah, we have progressed pretty late. We're almost going to hit midnight Eastern. I know for a couple of the players on uh, Hydra, it's not an issue. They're West Coast, so we're only approaching 9 p.m. for them. Maybe they've had a long day, but I mean, yeah, mental issues do happen deep into the rounds, deep into the games. We definitely saw that on the 32-round game. The ADS can be catching, and now Exo just going to be chucking into sight, but it's going to be sipping on OJ, the other L85, the Sledge. Nyx will trade one out onto Exo, but Yaga will drop Nyx. Now it's down to a 2v4. Yeah, Sipping on OJ, securing himself inside of the bathroom as it's Rudy and Aviation. I believe it's still Aviation playing topside. Drones coming out this time as uh, Aviation's going for a long flank down the bathroom hallway. And he'll take Sipping on OJ as he was droning, as you asked for. He gets caught with his pants down inside the bathroom. Midway through the round, it's a 2v3. 1v3. Yep, 1v3 indeed. Yaga doing work with that buck. Aviation will manage to get one, but Yaga will finish him off. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to Oregon we go. A decider map coming up. What a game. 
what a job by Dexterity to bring it back after such a, what would be very demoralizing to most teams, start to this matchup. They almost brought it into overtime. They were actually the favorites to go into overtime. They had a 4-2. It was a 4-2 situation in favor of Dexterity, and they weren't able to capitalize on it. In, in the what would have been the tying round of map number one, and then a 2v4 clutch came out by Hydra to win map number one, and then Dexterity doing a great job here in map number two to finish it out before it went into overtime. So, fellas, we're going to take, fellas, folks, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a very short break uh, while we get set up for this last round. Let the casters get a beverage. It's been a long night for us. And we will be back in just a, sh a couple of short minutes. So stick around, put on some nice music for you, and we will see you in just a minute.
Alrighty, folks, we are back. We're just waiting on the op bands for the decider map. Map number three is going to be Oregon before or between Dexterity and Hydra. Before we go any further, there was a community vote. And if you want to participate in future community votes, make sure you're following us on Twitter at CCS Esports. We asked the community, 316 votes came in, 54%. In favor of Dexterity taking this map. 46, Hydra. Very, very, very close vote. Dexterity just edging out Hydra. The end of the uh, poll there. You can also follow us on Twitter. At TY Tangles. And at, is it just at Flynn? Uh, Flynn F -L -L period? F-L-L-Y-Y-N-N. F-L-L. F, two L's, two Y's, two N's. There you go. Follow that, gentlemen. He's a great volunteer caster here at CCS. We're glad to have him. Also, you can follow our observer, Kaz Rep, C-A-Z-R-E-P. That guy is a trooper behind the scenes, hanging out with us, controlling the camera. Couldn't do it without him. So we are going to do a quick uh, coin flip here to decide who gets what side. The ops have been banned. Flynn, you want to run us through that? Uh, absolutely. So heading into Oregon, no Habana ban coming out. Uh, no Mira ban, thank God. Uh, <laughs> so we do have a Blackbeard, a Finca again. So that was uh, Hydra banning out Finca, all three maps. Clearly reading into the uh, the qualifier gameplay that Sipon OJ had brought out with that Finca fuse shield. Uh, so that's been a constant for Hydra. Blackbeard was the ban on the side of Dexterity on attack, then Echo and Doc. Two ACOGs off the board, only one eligible on the defensive side in Rook, an operator that doesn't see a lot of play these days. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think that that is a very specific counterband, just like you mentioned with the Finca. Um, sipping on OJ, just having more success with Fuse Shield than I've ever seen anybody have with the Shield ever in my life. He was just, I mean, it was unbelievable. He was ADSing people that were pre-firing at his head and coming out of the other side of that engagement, the winner. Um, and so to not see him doing it, uh, it's actually interesting. Believe it or not, folks, I am surprised to not see a Fuse Shield in this matchup because of how effective Sifanon OJ happens to be with that operator. Uh, meanwhile, Yaga, I got to talk about Yaga and Buck doing absolute work, getting that crazy pixel angle up through the hatch while standing in bathroom and then getting another kill after that. He also got the last kill to finish the game. Uh, that was a double kill as well. So Yaga doing a lot of work with that buck. Hyper finding a lot of success with that bandit. So everybody here kind of doing their job right now for dexterity. That wasn't necessarily the case starting out. And so... And so now here we are with uh, you guys won coin flip, so he was with the map number three. No, let's go on defense. All right, so it looks like everyone's uh, figured out what side they're going to be on. Dexterity going to be starting things off on defense once again. So uh, we will head into uh, map number three of Oregon with Hydra starting out with their first five rounds on attack. Dexterity on the defense. Mira and Smoke, uh, some common bans on Oregon to the detriment of the enjoyment of the play to watch. I will say that much. Uh, thankfully, still in play today. And uh, I imagine, I mean, losing those ACOGs that he talked about, the uh, the counter bans, as well as the Finca being lost. I don't know. The biggest thing we saw with the Fuse Shield coming out was it was the constant Blitz banning. You know, we just constantly saw a Lion Blitz ban on the attack. Both teams were committed to banning those two operators on attack every single game in the qualifiers. Uh, so the Fuse Shield was the next best option. I feel like putting Sippin' on OJ on the Blitz, though, ha we haven't seen yet. He's been in that support Thatcher role every time, and he's been fragging out even in that position. Yeah, absolutely. So the teams are readied up finally, so we will get this game underway. Here we go in the decider map of Dexterity versus Hydra. Winner of this map will take the series, and what an opener. I mean, both of these games so far have been just crazy. You know, lowering the teams from last season, we had 12 teams. 
Now to eight teams. We've noticed a lot of changes, the staff here at CCS. There's been a lot less prior to the season roster changes happening. Um, there's been a lot less. I mean, I think we even lost a team last season before the season even started because they broke up or something like that. There's been a lot more cohesive teams, a lot more experience playing together amongst the teams here. Not with each other, but but the teams themselves playing together for a long time. Um, on the EU side, there are a t there's a team or two that was you know formed specifically to try and play the qualifiers for CCS, and they made it, and now they're here. But on the NA side of the ball, I mean, we've just been seeing fantastic game after fantastic game, and I expect you know with this eight team lineup that we have, and every team playing every other team twice, not just once, not just playing everybody, and not just once, but twice throughout the season. I, I think we have a lot of for the record book type matchups yet to come throughout the CCS season. So make sure you hit that follow button out there if you're new here because we got a lot of great high-tier esports in Rainbow Six Siege for you this season. And here we go on Oregon, round number one. Blitz Doka B being brought out. So I'm anticipating some aggression being brought out of the hands of Hydra. Uh Mirror getting cleared off, and uh, Chef unfortunately bringing the recruit as apparently there was some miscommunication. Teams both readied up, and yet someone wasn't uh, at their computer uh, in the middle of a bio. What are you doing, Exo? Uh, Hot and cold rips up the smoke in 20 seconds. Exo trying to get aggressive onto the front door, and uh, a foolhardy mistake pays the price, and <laughs> immediately dexterity at a massive disadvantage. Yeah, sipping on OJ somehow coming down main stairs and all of the team primed and ready to go at the bottom of main stairs. But sipping on OJ, Hot and Cold was holding an angle there on the top of main stairs. Sipping on OJ, unfortunately missed it, was able to come down and kill Hotton after Hotton, the easiest kill of his career, coming out onto EXO. What are you doing? Anyway, <laughs> moving on. A, uh, a great refrag there. That's the lion off the board with no EODs being sent out. Uh, and now Chef with that M870 going to be aggressively peeking up these stairs. But it will be the Blitz coming oh! down. Aviation I thought Shields block bullets. What? Oh, my. Chef going off with the M870. Rushing upstairs. Going for what a is third. Happening? Got some down. It's all to RTC now with the semi-auto. Pulling out the SMG-12 in hand this time as he has the mirror of Yaga peeking up the main stairs. Yaga drops RTC. And M870 reigns supreme. Dexterity take round number one. That was totally calculated. 100% calculated. That recruit pick. He knew what he was doing the whole time. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not going to even consider that the story is any different than my opinion of how that how that came to be. So <laughs> Blitz and Dokubi again going to try and go for the second try. Jeez, uh, you lose that lion early. And uh, apparently the... Uh, or sorry, the aggression there just not paying off on the side of the attack even after a massive blunder. Hmm. I'm just getting word here from one of my producers that maybe the live feed isn't hot. It looks like it's hot to me on my OBS, but uh, if you guys are seeing action and uh, it's not actually changed over. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I'm just making sure. You know, we're on a delay here, so we do stuff, and then we get feedback that's like four minutes old on our side, and sometimes it's like, really? You know, is it, is it happening? Uh, but that's okay. Here we go. Round number two, and uh, what do you think about this pick? Kitchen Dining coming out. This is the second strange bomb site defense coming out here from Dexterity. Hey, man, they're the team that won twice on bathroom tellers on border. I'm, I'm done questioning what they do as far as defensive sites. Their play, I'll question all day. The it's site pick, man, I'll, I'll let them reign supreme, man. I'll let them do whatever the hell they want. That is, <laughs> that's up to them at this point. An interesting pick. I like the setup thus far, especially with a heavy topside control. It looks like that's exactly where Hydra want to press the most attention first and foremost. 
uh, sending three attackers topside to deal with the three defenders topside and completely ignoring the small tower and west take. You know, picking a site like this is a zero hero situation. You win the site, you're a hero. You pick the site, everybody's like, you're an idiot. Why would you pick that site? You know what I mean? It's the same thing when you do a jump out. You, know, you get a jump out, you get a kill, you manage. Even if you get a kill and die, it's still, you know, oh, that guy's a, good, a great player versus you jump out, you get obliterated, and it's like, what was he doing? You know, throwing, et cetera. Anyway, Nix will open it up, getting the kill on Hydra. That is Valk off the board as the attackers storm the second floor. Exo will take out Hot and Cold, and I just realized that there was a sound issue. Sorry about that. You couldn't hear the game sound. It should be back now. Nix will take out Exo on the refrag. 4v3 now, about half the round gone. That M870 play last round made it, it was so intense that I didn't even realize there wasn't game sound. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. 4v3, a minute and 15 left. Full upstairs control for the attackers as, as they uh, work on this kitchen hatch. Nix will get another kill now on the chef. And the attackers will take full control of kitchen. Sipping on OJ will kill the... Uh, will actually get a double kill killing Rudy and Aviation. Yago will get a kill of his own. And now if we flip flop or what... RTC doing battle through the open mirror window gets lit down to about five health and in a matter of about five seconds Sippin and Yaga have turned this round completely around. He'll throw one smoke out to cover him He'll peek around the corner where he saw some bullets flying, but Sippin on OJ will be rotating around back into dining RTC now holding an angle trying to figure out where that guy that was just shooting at him was More bullets are flying the smoke is about to disappear as he pushes up against the wall to hold an angle. That won't be enough. Yaga finishing it up with a double kill and dexterity. The heroes winning kitchen dining. Fascinating. Just absolutely fascinating. Uh, a wonderful job to recover once again. We've seen dexterity in unfortunate positions plenty of times this evening. And somehow they have the ability to just claw back from a certain grave and bring back rounds that they shouldn't win. And I've talked about it before. The difference between a good team and a great team is the team that has the ability to win rounds they should and win rounds they should not. You will set yourself apart. I don't. I don't know if I agree with everyone trying to drop through that pantry hatch though on the hands or at the side of Hydra. Um, you really should try maybe uh, spreading out a little bit more. I got the uh, the intention of clearing top side, and you did a good job of that, of clearing the roamers upstairs, pushing them back down. But uh, don't all then just drop through a hatch one by one to get uh, absolutely picked off. Absolutely. So upstairs to a more manageable, a more reasonable defensive bomb site. Dexterity will go. Now, a very interesting mirror window is being set up. Is it? Oh, you know what? It's the spectator, but for some reason, I thought it was facing into kids. And I, I have to forget that sometimes when the uh, spectator's up in the air, you can't see the, through the mirror at all. Uh, so a lot of utility being deployed. Nothing out of the ordinary. It looks like they're actually reinforcing in between the top of right, white stairs and the uh, small dorm. Not sure if they intend to maybe blow the cabinet out and then put a mirror. But here comes the attacking squad running in underneath. Nix will get killed number one. 20 seconds in on the sip it on OJ. Sip it on OJ, I think, was peeking through that door. No, he was at the top of main stairs, rotating out, getting pushed by the blitz. So now, at least underneath control for the attackers as they drone this first floor looking for any roamers. They're going bottom up on the top take. Not a bad choice, but you don't have any real soft destruction there. You have Nyx with the impacts, but that's about it. You don't have a buck on the board. You don't have a jackal with a shotgun. Uh, they do get that initial frag on the sipping on OJ. And uh, I guess they really wanted to try and displace any kind of roaming presence downstairs. They still have do, or sorry, still do have one laying downstairs at the bottom of white stairs to worry about. And bandits on the wall. I believe Hyper, is that Hyper inside his generator trying to go for a bandit trick? Onto the Habana charges coming out. No, it's Exo is the smoke. Now Hyper will rotate over, but instead he's going to launch out a Nitro Cell just at the edge of the breach hole. Rudy going to be unable to see him, and now it's Aviation getting Hyper aggressive in. He's going to get repelled by a smoke grenade. 
Brushing him back even further. Drones coming out as there's even more aggression coming out from the main hallway. Two defenders stacked up one on another. Hyper takes a few bullets from the P12 to the back, but will escape with his life. Yaga taking a long pixel angle all the way down from behind Dresser down the armory hallway. Yeah, so now we've got all four attackers in Master Bedroom. Smoke will run back and take position behind this little bookshelf here. Playing the Mira, there's not much I could do. That Mira is on a indestructible wall. And I typically like that setup a little bit better than putting it on the squatting soft wall. Because look here, I mean, the, the wall is fully opened up and there's not much that the attackers could do. There's still a minute left. Should they want to send somebody underneath to try and take care of the floor above, the Zofia would be perfect for that, but instead they're not going to do it. That is the third unconnecting Nitro Cell coming out from the defenders. Chef will take Nyx out with that Vector. Smoke grenades up the wazoo will come out. He'll peek down the hallway and blind fire. Aviation will do one with the shield. He'll get another. Chef will finally end his reign of terror. But the uh, Hyper on that bandit will be down on the stairs. And now a 1v3. And as a matter of fact, Lion is down as well. The Diffuser gets planted. The attackers will deuce out. This will give Chef enough time to pick up his teammate. And now they can try and approach. The remaining attackers will not... Actually, I was going to say they're not even going to deal with the down player. But they will. Padding their stats a little bit. No need for that. A peek in the closet will reveal RTC. But it'll be too late as he takes the head off of Chef with that SMG-12, and a long arm will start coming out from Hyper. Rudy will hear it, turn the corner, end the life of Hyper, and that will be Hydra on the board. Good recovery there as the round looked like he was about to stall out. A lot of those nitros, like you touched on, not connecting on their intended targets. Probably uh, one of the leading causes to that round going south, and also hot and cold, that lion uh downstairs at the bottom of white unable to uh, come in and go for that flank as he had downed hyper the band at the top of white stairs unable to secure that kill and a wonderful rotation you know you'd think you'd have someone underneath that default camp at top of the armory stairs to make sure that uh the mira of chef is unable to rotate over to white and pick up his teammate without hyper there in support i highly doubt that the round gets that close So heading downstairs now, our dexterity. And uh, they'll be defending the basement, so laundry and supply room. Still bringing out a, uh, a fairly similar lineup. No M870 recruit this time around, as they've uh, elected to go all across the board. Only defensive site they haven't elected to hold thus far through three rounds. Or sorry, entering into our fourth now is... Uh, is tower and i don't imagine we're going to be seeing any tower played uh, who knows at this point who who knows what dexterity has in store i mean when you're successful on kitchen dining it's kind of up in the air for what you're going to do next but again you know kind of like how i speculated with the first one where where they took uh tellers and, and bathroom on board i was like they're not going to do that again and they did and they were successful a second time somehow and so, who knows? Who knows what Dexterity is going to pull from behind their back? There's, there's just no telling. Lion getting an easy pick earlier in the round. will sit and wait, seeing if somebody will peek him at front door. Yet again, Jaeger kind of treading water here at the top of the stairs. EE1D will go out. Aviation making his way to the top of the stairs as well. He will get spotted by one of the defenders. I'm not sure if there's a... Uh, or maybe that was a drone spotting out one of the defenders at the top of the stairs. Either way, Doka B phone calls will go out. Everything to hassle these poor roamers upstairs. Blitz and Zofia now fully controlled, but Exo will take out that Zofia. And the crossfire now engaging. And oh no! Exo will stop and take a bullet for sipping on OJ. As I'm pretty sure that ADS was aimed at his head. Unfortunate timing for him as they would have been better off to set up some sort of crossfire. OJ will rotate all the way back to tower and through a rotation hole here in the attic. He'll see the shield just pass by, and he'll just wait and hold an angle. Plenty of room to rotate back and down tower should he need to. Tag's done a good job of clearing out the top side, at least on the south. But they haven't even noticed sipping on OJ here. He's going to be spreading shots of the wall. RTC almost lands the flick with the SMG-12. Can't finish him off. Sipping on OJ claims his second, or sorry, his first victim. Does Exo getting the earlier pick onto Nyx? 
Now this Rome game is still doing a lot of damage to Throne OJ has the freedom to rotate back down the tower stairs into meeting if he pleases, peeking the hatch as Hyper gets shut down for his stupidity. And now they've leveled up man count once again. Hot and cold, gonna get concussed by an LMI as he comes downstairs. So he's clearing the barbed wire in the main stairs. The flashbang's coming out to clear ADSs. They do not have any smoke grenades on the board. Sorry, they do, as Blitz will drop one down. It's Aviation rushing in, going all the way down hallway. He's gonna go aggro as all three attackers rush into sight. Aviation getting the double melee kill. Now it's all to sit on OJ, that roamer who's gone for the flank all the way around through attic, coming down the armory stairs. Coming into main lobby, but all three attackers on site. Plant goes down inside supply room. They have an intact mirror inside closet to use. If there's any success to be had, it's gonna be sipping on OJ going through the back. Instead, he elects to come down the front stairs. He's got an intact mirror with a lion behind it. This does not look like it's gonna go well for sipping on OJ. Trying to vault up onto the laundry machine, changes the elevation, but hot and cold will shut him down. That is Hydra getting back on the board once again. I love how patient hot and cold was there. Easy kill towards the end once he was engaging with your teammates. And uh, Hydra's doing a fantastic job. They did a great job on the roam clear. At, at, at first, they lost a couple of people, but they recouped, made it a two for two, were able to push the site, and then get the trades down onto the defenders on site in their favor. They weren't, they weren't, they didn't even lose one person after that initial flurry upstairs. So. Fairly even kill spread across the board. RTC and Hyper having a little bit of a problem starting this game off. But we're four rounds deep. It's 2-2. Two, two. Something that I wouldn't have uh, um, been... Or something that I'm not surprised at at all. Seeing as that how the first two maps have gone so far between Hydra and Dexterity. I hate to lay that round all at the feet of, of one person. But uh, XO... Or was it EXO? No, sorry. It was Hyper last time on the Pulse. They've elected to swap some ops around. But uh, Hyper is that Pulse peeking up the hatch, trying to look into classroom. You have the cardiac sensor to give the information. You also have the nitro cell, which would have been so, so useful at ripping apart aviation, that blitz rushing and dropping hatch. If he has that nitro in hand, or at least stays inside a laundry behind these, uh, behind the laundry machine inside of uh, pantry, and waits to either it just establish the crossfire with the smoke playing in behind the mirror or just launch out the nitro. That round goes entirely differently. Instead, he's getting too aggressive underneath that hatch, and uh, he pays the price for it. Yes, he does indeed. First Dokubi call will come out. The first nitro cell will go out as well, and the pulse will get spotted out and easily dispatched. Aviation just having a field day on that blitz, and it's funny because the last time we saw Dexterity, they were the ones dishing it out with the shield. Now they're the ones taking it. Aviation seeing, finding a lot of success with the blitz. Charging, knifing, you name it. No problem whatsoever. And, uh, you know, I got to commend it for it. You know, blitz having recently been nerfed the range of the flash and, and et cetera means that he's not quite as easy as he was, as he was to play, you know, a, a season ago. Something I will point out as well is hot and cold on the lion. It's the third out of five rounds he's been picked off, not only first, but within the first 30 seconds of the round. He's having a rough go of it so far in Oregon, and I'm not even really sure if it's his positioning really that's setting him up to fail, if maybe it's just the aggression coming out on the hands of uh, Dexterity that really seem to be reading him properly, but uh, he, uh, in that such an influential operator role of Lion, even after that nerf, he has had a rough time on Oregon thus far. Yeah, he's definitely not having fun. And, and uh, you know, he's been so instrumental in the success of Hydra on Coastline with that Ash play. Yaga will get the kill with the Toxic Babe. I'm not sure where that was. Oh, right at the back of the closet there. I'm not sure if somebody tried to peek into the smoke or... Got unlucky. Hyper will take out another one. So only two of Hydra remain now. One pinned in blue. The other one very nearby. Smoke number two will go out. 50 seconds left to play. Smoke just watching his back end now as he's got three teammates watching that, that front angle. Sophia will throw out a couple of grenades, but Hyper will shut her down. He'll peek around the corner. And now poor RTC completely surrounded. We'll have to make something really crazy happen if he wants to make it out of this round alive. The last smoke will go out and absolutely eat away at RTC, taking three-fourths of his health. He'll find the guy behind him, 
He'll take one out. 1v3. Only about 15 health to work with. And he will get popped from up top. Jaeger shifting on OJ. Cleaning that round up for dexterity. So, if you're Hydra, and your name's Rudy, and you're a breacher, what you doing? Decides to go and join the back push uh, instead of grabbing any hatches or applying any kind of control and allowing, uh, once again, that flank from Sipping on OJ on the Jaeger to come around. That was rough. It was a rough take there from Hydra, and uh, they lose their, their tied situation. They, they walk out of their first five rounds, their first half of the game, at a round deficit now. Uh, this is... It was a little rough, honestly, on those attacks. And like I touched on, hot and cold having a rough go on the Lion. Um, hopefully, he can be a little more influential on the smoke this time around on defense for Hydra. But uh, after such a dominating performance in the first four rounds of Coastline, I find it hard to believe that we're in this situation where it looks like it's Dexterity that might be taking the match. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the community vote, remember, 54 to 46. That was one thing. Then the match started, and then four rounds later, and there was only four total kills for Dexterity. 4-0 uh, Hydra. At that point in time, there's nobody... If we would have taken... If we would have stopped the match and taken a poll there... It would have been 99 to 1 that that Dexterity was going to win. And now here we are, 1 to 1, map 3, Dexterity ahead, and uh, poised to win this match if they can kind of keep up what they've been doing. It's a, a very, very, for, for a bunch of young guys, it's a very level, I mean, the fact that they were so level-headed, it's a very mature thing to do to be able to put the past in the past turn around and and make plays and win rounds and win maps and possibly win matches so I'm taking things a little bit slower here breach charge just come out top side I think it was hyper on the twitch I uh, can't be sure though but I think he's the only one on the board who has the option for breaches maybe Ying does now I think it's, it's claymore and something it might actually be breaches and not not sure. I'm so used to having her having her smoke grenades. Uh, there's a roamer downstairs as well, heading towards the back tower stairs. Chef going to be droning it out in just a second. Just misses him as he rotates up. I think it was RTC. No, it was not RTC on the bandit. It was uh, someone else on the defense. Nonetheless, a lot of uh, multi-floor presence here from Hydra trying to establish this roam game. Because I think it's only hot and cold rotating back to site now. Nyx was topside as well for a minute there. And Rudy inside of kids now. So uh, the Rome game falling off without doing too much damage, but also not incurring any damage on themselves either. Still have Chef the Breach, uh, or the Havana, and he's going to take down Nyx. So he tries to peek out from the meeting double door. Midway through the round now, and Dexterity again at the man advantage. Yes, indeed. I'm not sure what happened to uh, the Ying. Ying taking a little bit of early damage, but Mute off the board now. The wall will get opened up into small dorms. The Candelos will get thrown all over the place. He'll rush in. He'll get the guy behind the mirror. He'll go over to the rotate hole. Exo, he'll get another one. He'll get that castle. He'll look down through the floor to see if any of the kitchen defenders. Meanwhile, the rest of the attackers will swarm the site. Hyper will get one. Only one left now. And a full upstairs clear. A flawless round, if I'm not mistaken, by Dexterity. And they just swarm the upstairs and destroyed any opposition with about a minute and 15 left. That was, uh, touched on it there. The, uh, the multi-level Rome game from Hydra. That was, uh, not, uh, not influential enough on the round, we'll say. It was the Ying of Exo dropping all three Candelas in succession, rushing in and taking the free blinded kills. Quite honestly, I was uh, I was very shocked to see that work so effectively. But when you don't have the man count on site, uh, not really hard to uh, to imagine it happening. Yes, indeed. Sorry for the blackout there. We're just uh, doing a little bit of a refresh from our observer, and uh, we'll get started back up again right now. Two to four and dexterity out of nowhere. Now they look just as good as Hydra looked when they started this match on Coastline. So, prep phase now going, they'll bring a castle, a couple of interesting castle spots, as now the roles have changed, and Hydra 
Well, actually, it's been changed for one round. So Hydra taking their second round at defense. It's been a long night, folks. It gets late for me. It's probably late for you, too, out there. North American folks tuning in tonight. And if you're from the UK, it is really early for you. So welcome. Either way, here we go into round number seven of Oregon. And uh, the attackers seemingly all over the place before they congeal to attack the site later on in the round. Opening up the front door, Chef going to be applying some pressure and holding for the flanks once again as Hydra like to go topside, imagining that they can do a little more damage. <laughs> Aviation, you there? Checking cameras and uh, allows his mirror to get popped by Hyper early on. So that's a lot of that kitchen presence going to be negated. Uh, he can still play in behind that ejected mirror, but now it's effectively, again, Exo is just kind of walking into sight. We got a little bit of deja vu here. Spray's going back and forth. He'll take down Why the peaking Nix once him? again, the first to fall. And uh, they're awaiting the breach to come upstairs. They're going to be heading over to connector window. It's going to be Yaga dropping a frag grenade to clear out the castle barricade, shoot off the bandit charges, sipping on OJ. That breach again coming in through the armory window, going all the way into Master Claws. going to be opening up site once again. Nix, why are you peeking? Why? Uh, two people peeked him, and he just managed to only kill one. Get a little bit of damage down on the RTC, as a matter of fact. So here come the Candelas. A wall gets opened up. Some pre-fires coming in. He will finally take a little bit of punishment for getting so exposed there into the hallway. Meanwhile, the rest of the defenders, I mean the attackers rather, will rotate downstairs. Yaga will get one to buck, hanging on to these north side windows on the outside of kids' dorms. More Candels will come out. Aviation will Nitro Ying finally ending the threat there in the main hallway. And the attackers will kind of reconvene and uh, maybe do a little bit of research. Habana doing uh, way outside a front door watching a rotation. Very interesting spot. Uh, not really helping your team at the moment. His time is now ticking away. Less than a minute, only 50 seconds. RTC will get downed upstairs. Smoke will get uh, killed as well. So now only the Mira left on defense. The plant for Thermite would go down. Mira is at the bottom of the, of the white stairs. She will creep back up. The mirror has been open. She's got a lot to contend with up top. She will get one and lose all but about two or three health. She'll run downstairs and attempt to actually revive her teammate at the last second. But a third of the diffuser time is now gone. So mirror five health. Bandit with 50 versus three attackers and a half gone diffuser. Chef will get one. Aviation will trade right back. He'll turn the corner and sip it on OJ. We'll be waiting right there, holding that angle. And Dexterity now, 5-2, match point. And if they win one more before Hydra can win three in a row, it will be over. That's rough. That's really rough after the performance early on. Like I said, on Coastline, you walk away with a... Uh... A 4-1 lead in the first half of the first match. You look absolutely dominating. You barely look like you lost the fifth attacking round on coastline. And then it seems like Dex woke up. They were asleep there for a minute. The game started a little bit late because of uh, the tech issues. And then something was unleashed in Dexterity. And they seem like they have no intention of slowing down whatsoever. Match point, series point after a devastating start to the evening. Yeah, devastating. That, that's exactly the, the term I'd use. It was devastating. They were getting manhandled. They were getting obliterated. They were getting smacked around like they were, you know, copper four, and the other team was like a super diamonds. You know what I mean? It was embarrassing. It was, it was a steamrolling. It was an obliteration. And the dexterity has absolutely turned the tables. Not a lot of teams could do that. And, for as, and I've touched on this before, but for as young as they are, Everybody knows how emotionally unstable, you know, young adults can be. I sure as heck know. And for them to poise, to, to gather their poise like that and uh, do what they've managed to do so far is very, very impressive. And I look forward to watching them throughout the season, win or lose, because it ain't over yet. Something I'm really shocked by is Hydra have elected to... Uh to bring in a Jaeger 
when Exo has honestly just been walking into sight every time, dropping some Candelas down and going. And the only thing stalling him out from doing it last time was his first Candela being caught by an ADS. And that allowed him to stay in place long enough for the Nitro from Aviation below to get the only pick on the defensive side before the post plan happened. Now, although as he tries it there, Nix will gun him down to the bottom of the main stairs before the hatch was opened up. Sipping on OJ as the thermite had breached open the back of uh, construction tunnel wall, but uh, Chef has yet to get over and open up the main hatches. Yaga now going to be re-peaking. He's going to take down Hydra for the, or sorry, Rudy for the trade. Now he's maintaining his angle in towards hallway, going to be breaching open this barbed wire again. No ADSs on the board to stop this. A prone peek from in behind the island. There's three defenders all trying to get aggressive onto Rudy, or sorry, Yaga. He will fall. Nyx will take him down with the UMP. Sipping on OJ grabs one before Hot and trades it right back. It's a 2v3. Hydra trying to stay alive as best possible as Chef opens up the meeting hatches. Yes, indeed. So... A little bit of some work on both sides. The, the defenders taking the better half of it. Dexterity have a lot of work if they want to close this match out right now. Not impossible. But you do have that mirror, that smoke we've talked about so many times. No matter how many attackers you have left, how hard it is to deal with that mirror and that smoke here on Oregon Basement. A minute left to work with, so they're going to drone a little bit, gather some information. And uh, down to the bottom of tower into blue, it appears they will go. They're going to go for this back push as they can't really do anything about that mirror. I believe Hyper's lost his last Twitch drone or is utilizing it currently to try and pop a mirror. He doesn't have any in hand unless they're out on the field somewhere. Uh, he won't be able to disable that uh, front mirror and trying to push that against the smoke as a death sentence. Hyper, though, with some good spraying. Intuition knowing that Aviation will be pressed up against the hard wall instead of playing the mirror. Levels up man count down to 2v2 with 30 seconds left on the board. Chef with the fuser is still topside as he literally rotate whichever way he pleases. It looks like he's positioning himself to go for a front take. He's still taking time. Bandit of the RTC playing in behind of the metal... Bookshelves, 15 seconds on the board. Chef is going to go for the drop in the hallway hatch. But Hot and Cold can't win that engagement. Now rushing in, he was down to 1v1. And RTC will save the game. And we will head deeper as we head to round number nine, a 5-4 scoreline. The end of that round was nuts. Four, Dexterity. three, sorry. Dexterity's hungry for it. But Hydra still able to hang on. And 4v3, I tell you what, or 5 you, you did five. it to me. Yep. <laughs> I was yep. going to say 4v3 a lot more manageable than 5 to 2, but they just dealt with 5 to 2. It's now 5-3. They still got a ways to go, but they're doing all right so far. I mean, you got to win them one at a time, so that's what they need to do at this point. Take it one at a time. Try to bring this one into OT. Dexterity obviously going to try and finish it out right here. So bringing the Jaeger this time, RTC going to be heading upstairs. I mean... That round was was so close. Uh, Topside once again, uh, as the defense has started to pick people off, and then it uh, it fell apart in the last minute. Uh, Hydra did a very good job of stalling things out this time, not allowing Axo to just walk into sight with his candelas and absolutely obliterate and get some free kills off the blinded players. Um, also, bringing out the cap can, an interesting decision from Nyx, but with uh, how little everyone's been droning on behalf of dexterity and also how aggressive they've been with just rushing straight in i imagine some of these capcan traps could actually do their job and uh catch a couple people most notably exo off uh off guard i'm, I'm, I'm watching chat right now uh react to my my phrasing super diamonds so uh you know chat is very good for entertainment every once in a while uh, but here we go on what could be the final round yet again. Hydra is going to defend this upstairs, and they will bring this Kafkin to try and slow down some of this crazy, fast Ying push. They were able to be successful shutting him down right off the bat last round downstairs. But the round before, he wreaked a lot of havoc pushing into this main hallway. And what did I... Oh, I just thought that Hyper got that kill. No, RTC somewhere else on the map with the Jaeger will kill Exo. I thought that Hyper for a second got the kill through the wall. Uh, but that is not the case. Oh, it will be Exo falling. So no Ying rushes into sight once again. 
A minute deep in the round and dexterity uh, looking a little off kilter here, but uh, still have the ability to come back in this by all means. It's only one operator. Uh, you do lose the utility and the candelas, which have been pretty effective, and now they lose the mirror top white as well. At least both mirrors to the Twitch Toronto Piper doing a lot of work. The Ash Charge going to breach open the window at Connector, and now Yaga going to be peeking aggressive as Nick tucked away inside of Generator. He's going to get aggressive onto this window to try and give them the two-man advantage. He's going to get droned out, and he takes the free fire as he backs away to the safety of kids. The Thermite Charge going to be breaching out into the uh, or closet. Rudy going to grab another as Yaga will fall. The smoke Grenade will repel the progress of sipping on OJ for a little bit longer as they all try to collapse onto site with only three attackers remaining. As much as the attackers have driven the defenders out of their safe positions, the defenders are still able to get the trades and they're doing a fantastic job to boot. Aviation getting another kill to 5v2, still a minute left to work with, but a very, very hard obstacle to overcome if you're the attacking squad right now. RTC will get another one. It's just sipping, poor sipping. Stuck in small dorms. Will get surrounded, smoked, and shot at. And he will get his life ended. Hot and cold, picking up the kill. And bringing Hydra one round closer to overtime. Again, the, uh, the comebacks going back and forth. Every single map so far has been incredibly close. Lots of back and forth action. Um... Honestly, I'm I'm really impressed by both teams' play. Their ability, even with backs against the wall, to remain resilient, to remain uh, strong under pressure, and uh, constantly fight back. They've uh, they've put on a great show once again. Going three maps, going uh, possibly into overtime on a map number three here. Dexterity again does have the ability to close this thing out with a successful attack. Exo gonna be out to go for the Ash this time instead of the Ying. He's been shut down a couple rounds in a row now with the inability to just candela it and walk into sight as easy as it was the first couple times. But uh, now in the fifth iteration of their attack, the last round before we head to overtime, if things do get tied up, uh, we do have uh, an op swap here. Exo may be trying to go a little more brainless here with the Ash Rush instead of having that T95, the slower rate of fire on that LMG compared to the R4C might afford him some advantage here. And I imagine Hydra are going to be very wary of it as it was Nick shutting it down for the first time. Absolutely. So this will be the third opportunity that Dexterity has to finish the match. Not just the map, but the match. This is the third opportunity. They did a great job starting it out. They finished, or they didn't finish, but they got almost to the end. Very strong, 5-2. Here comes Exo. He's not had a lot of luck. He's been dying a lot early. The last two rounds, he was the first one to die. He pushes all the way in through Kitchen. There are some drones droning around. None at his feet, though, giving him real-time information. You see, you got two attackers standing outside the garage droning right now, trying to feed him a little bit of information. Unfortunately... That aggressive uh, push into meeting hall is not going to be met with any resistance. Both hatches are sealed, and the defense is turtling down on the site. Pulse underneath, though, getting a little bit of information, feeding it to his team so they know of that Ash's presence nearby. A lot of little sight lines open up, a lot of ways for the attackers to watch their back. But it might be a little bit of time before they realize that there's actually no real threat up above. All five defenders playing on site for Hydra. They're playing very conservative as every single little mistake, every overreach of aggression, every misstep is amplified even further and feels like such a massive error later in the rounds and the rounds mean so much. And now pressing onto site as Dexterity have established that all five defenders are stacked awaiting this site push. They've elected to uh, to turtle up inside of supply room in the closet, downstairs, awaiting the pushing from dexterity as they start breaching open hatches upstairs. If not, OJ going to be breaching open the back wall of construction again, but it'll be Nick starting things off onto XO once again. I believe he's died first about six rounds this game, and it's not going well for I him. I think so. I think so, yeah. And the, he's died first three consecutive rounds, I know for a fact. So uh, not a lot of work coming out from him and uh, not what you want to do. I mean, this is your third opportunity to close out the entire match. All these hours, all these rounds, all this hard work, all this effort. And to just not be able to close is going to be heartbreaking. Pulse will run up the stairs. He'll get rid of the Claymore, stopping the attic push. He 
will not find anybody in meeting hall, but instead he will push forward to the other side of attic and wait it out. He'll see the feetsies of somebody go through. He'll drop down and realize that they also drop down. Aviation will get a kill. Nyx will get a kill. And RTC will get the kill or actually get the trade with sipping on OJ. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to overtime. There's still a mirror on the board. I'm happy. We're good. It's no, it's no 32 rounds. Take a deep but, breath. Uh... Overtime doesn't mean 32 <laughs> rounds, okay? Listen, uh, PTSD, okay? No, I'm I understand. I was right there with you, pal. I was right there with you. But... Oh, I know. <laughs> the Canadian in you is coming out. You better be careful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, here we go to overtime. And uh, I think that this is kind of the ending that this matchup deserves. I mean, it's been so back and forth. It's been a Cinderella story on both sides. Ooh, you can't sorry. really ask for this game to, to end anytime soon. It's honestly been a wonderful game to watch. It some, really has. Uh, some pretty decent throws on both sides, but also some great resiliency on both sides. You know, the, uh, the ability to refuse death. The ability <laughs> to continue fighting when all seems lost is admirable, and it's a perfect showing thus far. Bandit battery on the hatch. I haven't seen that catch anyone off guard lately, but if you're far, you're so, far enough away, Rudy might miss it. I'm actually a fan of that, especially competitive where that just doesn't happen. And believe yeah. it or not, I'm not sure if it's been patched, but you were used to be able to put the battery kind of behind the corner oh, yeah. in the hallway towards kitchen. And so where you couldn't see the battery necessarily. And and people are so quick to like pop the, you know, the Habana, pop the Habana uh, that, uh, you know, losing one Habana charge when all three hatches are, are, are sealed, you know, can really make a difference in a round. So I like that. I like that. Aggressive rum game coming out of the hands of Dexterity. And looks like... Nix was thinking about launching a couple concussion mines up the stairs to try and catch him off. It was actually an impact to the top of the stairs. I don't know if he was trying to make a rotation hole through dorms and generator or if he just wanted to impact that doorway uh, to get rid of any possible Ella or lesion mines, neither of which are on the board. I don't know, it's an ineffective droning going on, but the pulse of Exo will get spotted out inside of kids. Now the blitz of aviation rushing him in. He doesn't have an escape hatch. RTC drops, sipping on OJ. Exo falls with Amelia the shield. That's a perfect roam clear executed by Hydra. I have a feeling that this is the only time this entire season Hydra is going to be able to get away with the Blitz after the amazing aviation plays we've seen today so far. Uh, now that people know what Hydra's about, they're not going to dare allow aviation bring a Blitz against them. He's been so effective at helping clearing the roamers. Whether or not he was directly causing the kills or indirectly causing a distraction for his teammates to get the kills, he's been indispensable. And uh, you can kind of see why uh, Blitz gets on everybody's nerves in this meta. So more barbar bar going to be cleared for aviation to get even more aggressive. You still have the smoke canisters on Yaga. I think that's the first one going out at the bottom of the stairs now. Flashbangs come flying in to dispel those ADSs as the Habana charges don't do it anymore. And Rudy going to try and stick this plant in the smoke as it's dissipating. He's able to stick this plant on the stairs. He's holding it. There's no one else trying to frag him out. There's no smoke and cover. There was smoke on the mirror we didn't see so he gets the plant down to the bottom of the stairs all five attackers left hot and drops another one hyper will fall it's down to yaga and chef they both drop at the drop of a dime and hydra now four straight rounds i believe that is to put this into a uh, match point once again as he's holding the smoke grenade and just ripping through people oh yeah that's how you do it listen oh, hydra yeah. hydra we saw this high i'm not saying hydra where you been we saw this hydra earlier Okay, it's been like a like a reverse parabola, like a U, right? They started off up here at the top. It came down and on on border they just couldn't find their 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 footing. And then now here we are on the uptrend again. Hydra just doing absolute work. They were down two five, ladies and gentlemen. They've won four straight. And now if they win one more, it's over. Hydra will have overcome a five two deficit had done what seemed to be the impossible after the run that um, Dexterity was on. So, you know, what a match that we've seen so far. I feel like to get our money's worth, we need to go at least a few rounds deep into OT. 
Flynn probably wants to kill me for saying that, but uh, I feel like that's what this game deserves. Let's just not go 32 and I'm happy. That's all I care about. That's all I care about. We can go deep into OT if you want. I'm loving this game so far. I don't really want it to end. It's been a very exciting, entertaining, and uh, ferocious matchup. And if it went deeper, I'm cool. I just like to go to bed before like 2 a.m. Maybe. Nah. I mean, nah, nah, you'll be alright. One right now. <laughs> I mean, it, it'd be nah, nice. you'll be alright. Hey, listen. Listen, I wanted, before, while I have the chance here, I wanted to just say uh, thank you, Sternab, out there for the biddies. Uh, we don't expect anybody to donate to us. We got the link just in case you're so inclined. And uh, if you do end up donating to CCS, it doesn't go into anybody's pocket. Every last red cent of any donations we receive go uh, to the prize pool and to the production uh, to help make CCS um, a little bit more viable in the worldwide community now that we're overseas to bring competitive siege to more people. But anyway, Exo will get killed number one of the round. A kind of a flip-flop from what we've seen the last three rounds with Exo getting killed. Sippin will get killed number two. There's two minutes and 15 seconds left. And already two of the of the attackers off the board. And I'll tell you one thing. That blitz that has been giving them so many problems is one of said attackers that have been killed thus far. So it was the excellent roam clear of both Nex and Aviation last round that gave him the massive advantage. Sipping on OJ, walking in the classroom, <laughs> grabs two, Yaga finishes it off. We are not done just yet, ladies and gentlemen. That round ended as fast as you could blink. See A now, job there on the roam clear shutdown. See now as we go deeper in OT, it's my fault because I said I wanted it. But the, mm -hmm. that was the exact mirror of what happened the last round. The last round, Hydra came in untouched and demolished Dexterity. This round, Dexterity came in untouched and demolished uh, Hydra. So it's just tit for tat. I, it, it's it's anybody's ball game, folks. This is map three. We're in round three of overtime. We'll at least see round uh, four. So we'll at least see two more rounds, including this one. And uh, it's anybody's ball game. Who wants it more? They've come all the way. Right? It's win or go home. It's not really win or go home, but it's win or... You know how much it stinks to lose your first game of the season, especially something as hard fought as this? And we talked about it in the record-setting game, 32-round game. Could you imagine what it feels like to lose this game? Well, this is map number three. They've played that many rounds. These two, these two teams have played just as many rounds as we saw that one day. Maybe not on one map, but throughout this best-of-three series... So uh, now I think we're exactly 32 now 646466 six, six. that's 10 10 12 32 Damn I'm good but listen <laughs> <laughs> Listen it's it's the same feeling as who wants it more who could dig down deep and pull out the stuff it takes to win This this is competitive Rainbow Six Siege ladies and gentlemen so now Dexterity opting to go for more of a construction push here. They have been bringing out the double breach a lot lately, uh, using Stefan on OJ on that thermite to breach open this construction wall into box, and then using Chef to go upstairs and eliminate the hatch reinforcements. Uh, it has worked out pretty well at displacing that back mirror to push towards the hallway, uh, but it has come down to the play of hot and cold and that smoke as to whether or not they've been effective at pushing the front in tandem. Yes, indeed. So, a lot of droning going on in construction. I was going to say uh, the Thermite hadn't been joined by any of his teammates, but Exo on the Ying pushes up. He has not been having a great day so far on the Ying. Been the first off the board time and time again. Having a little bit of success last round. The Bullets will go back and forth, and he goes down first again. Sipping on OJ. We'll get the refrag, though. He'll peek in. He'll get another one down. He'll run out of bullets, so he'll pull out the pistol. Rudy will finish him off and be able to pick up his teammate. But Yaga on the other side, at the front door rather, no, in the back, under three-story, will get a kill. The mirror will get opened up. So all sorts of havoc being wreaked on both of these squads all over the map right now. Concussion mines being sent up by Yaga on the lifeline of Zofia. RTC going to be checking these Valk cams uh, display, or sorry, uh, spread out around site. 
As the three attackers are pushing from the backside still, but they've regained some top floor control now, trying to avoid any flanks coming up. All three defenders seem satisfied in staying on site. Rudy trying to play in hallway underneath the freshly breached hallway hatch. She'll evacuate to the Mira. I don't know if that's popped or not. It has. So the ejected Mira stuck in a rock in a hard place now as he gets stunned up with a Zofia lifeline. Yaga looking in towards supply room. And Quick peek from RTC, not going to be effective, but Chef will drop Rudy, as that was the M Valkyrie stuck in behind that ejected mirror. Yaga pushing the hallway, drops hot and cold. It's all to the bandit of RTC, who grabs one, but Chef will shut him down, and a dexterity have the ability to end this thing in the next round. I'm good at words. Yes, indeed. And for those asking, we switch every two rounds in this best of two overtime. Every two rounds. So, yes, dexterity winning two straight now after... Hydra got to the first OT match point. Now are posed to take it should they continue the success that they've been having. The Hydra defense will be taken downstairs yet again. They didn't have a lot of success with it last time. But hopefully they'll have the you know made some changes or, or strategize some changes to counter the type of push that Dexterity has been putting on them down below. So, again, no Jaeger being brought out uh, from Hydra. Uh, this time, Exo is staying on the Ash. Don't know if he's going to die first again. Uh, but uh, he's bringing out the Ash. So, no Candela rush into sight at the hands of Exo. But uh, I'm really surprised that Hydra haven't read that by now and uh, just run a Jaeger 24-7 at this point just to eliminate that fear and it looks like they're gonna be going downstairs for a turtle hold again as they haven't double reinforced the meeting hatches and unless they were all playing five on site you have some valcam set up by rudy underneath the table decently common spot for a valcam to check inside of meeting pretty hard one to spot unless you know to look for it um and now again dexterity yeah all five defenders chilling on site they're gonna have to get some quick droning done to try and uh, utilize as much time as possible on the push downstairs yeah, sorry, I know we're having a little bit of a frame drop right now. We're going to stay live. I mean, if it's not unwatchable, we don't want to miss any of the action. Maybe between rounds we'll do another quick refresh, but we want to stay live on this, seeing as that this long uh, match could end at any moment. And it's not terrible. I think we get, we're getting probably 30, 25, 30 frames, something like that. Uh, but I can definitely see a little bit of degradation. But like I said... If it, uh, if it gets, like, unwatchable, we'll change it. Otherwise, we want to keep our eyes peeled on the game. So, uh, a little bit of upstairs, attic control, meeting control here for the attackers. A minute into this match, what could be the final round of this match. And a lot of defenders watching the back end. The, the attacking team has pushed a lot through construction here lately. And here's sipping on OJ yet again in the construction area. This time, the construction wall is bandited. No Thatcher, there is a a um, Twitch drone. Not sure if she is driving it down in that direction. The hatches are getting opened up as well. The batteries could get shot from the hatch too, just as easily. So he will just have to wait until that gets done. Bandit is gonna push up aggressively, see if maybe he can pick up through the hatch if he wants to risk it with everything on the line. Yaga will take Rudy out. That is the Valk gone from that rear stage stairs. He will put out one stun grenade down through the hatch. Exo will see one. He'll do a quick peek down to the stairs. He knows somebody is nearby, but he doesn't want to contend with that smoke. He'll throw a flashbang out, but by then the smoke has successfully rotated all the way back to safety behind that mirror window. And now, oh, what a shot by Hot and Cold. Oh, through, but from behind the mirror onto Exo almost instantaneously. RTC will get one now. It's a 4v3. 45 seconds left. Sipping on Oja will even it out. It is a 3v3. 38 seconds. Dexterity. All they need to do is win one more. Not if Hot and Cold can help it as he picks up his second. 30 seconds now. And uh, a lot of bullets going back and forth. But not a lot for these attackers to do as the smokes keep coming out and stopping them in their tracks. 
18 seconds on the board. Sipping OJ is going to have to go for a hallway push here. Chef tries to push through box door. It's pressed up against the mirror. RTC will drop in. This diffuser lost. And now the rotation comes up from Sipping on OJ. RTC will save the round as it was the mirror that had been downed but not finished off. They still had hot and cold for safety measures. And uh, Hydra also not done yet. So I think we're going to uh, I'll have to get word from my observer on whether or not we're going to do that little refresh to try and save some frames here. It appears as if we are because the uh, timer stopped for me. There we go. Now we're back. We'll see if that uh, makes a little bit of difference. I think it did the last time. So here we go. Back tied up. Remember, this is a win by two. So two more rounds guaranteed. Round number 15 coming up. We're not even halfway to the longest one we've ever did. What do you think about that, Flip? It's terrifying. I don't want to see it go that long, but uh, if we have to, we will. It's all in uh, fair competition. You want to have the uh, the best team win, not win by some coin flip victory. That is correct. Um, you you want to win by being the best team, proving you're the best team. Both the games so far this, uh, this evening have been absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm really impressed by both of their play, and if we have to keep going deeper on Oregon to find a true winner for this game, then by all means. Yeah, and I agree with you completely, and I, uh, um, you know, we had talked about it after the match, which, you know, everybody knows what it is by now, I'm sure. And we both decided that, you know, it's, it's to give these teams the opportunity to prove who's better and not in the game prematurely because, you know, they've reached some sort of round or time limit um, is it was important to us, which is why we're kind of doing this this season. But we're not super deep in OT. So uh, here we go into round number 15, like I said. Um, round 16 guaranteed should one team decide to win both of these rounds. Though they say decide to win. I'm sure they both decided to win, but can they pull it off is the real question. Lots of sprays coming out, and that'll be Aviation, the most influential operator so far this evening. Blitz being taken down by Sipping on OJ. He gets immediately traded out by the SMG-12 of RTC. That's a huge loss to Hydra starting things off, as uh, Aviation on that Blitz has been a monster to deal with for Dexterity. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's it's that's a trade I'd make every time, although Sipping on OJ, he's had a very, very good three games so far. So, you know, his frag potential is a is also a win for the attacking squad. So I would say that it's pretty even, although that shield has been wreaking a lot of havoc on poor dexterity. Here comes the uh, Twitch drone. It just gets shot, hip fired before it can get that mirror open. Good timing there for the bandit. Uh, Pulse will be working in this attic area, trying to stop any push from that side as well including opening the windows to shoot at the bandit, who I believe is even to this moment still trying to bandit trick. Hot Gold will shoot through the wall, but bullets will rain back on him, and he will get injured, but he will, for some reason, Exo will peek all the way up against that attic wall, and he'll get his head taken off. Not sure what he was thinking. Now it's a 4v3. So Hydra recovering from the loss of aviation. More sprays coming out from Nyx. Unable to find the head of Chef. The mirror peeking in behind the bomb. Hyper almost gets caught out on a bad rotation out from Big Window as well. Now down to 40 seconds on the board. Hydra still have to start aggressing onto site. They had their Habana charges branded tricks off the wall. Smoke grenades coming out to cover the hallway, but it's an easy spray for the defenders to stop that as Yaga does just that. Concussion mines coming out from Nyx now on the... Sophia hot and cold will shut down Hyper on the flank coming up white stairs and this is exactly the back pressure they needed holding a tight angle is Chef, but he gets shut down by Nyx it's all up to Yaga now the Valkyrie alone inside a big window a great shot on the hot and cold but can't deal with the tsunami encroaching upon him RTC drops him Hydra match point series point once again this will be Hydra's I believe third opportunity because they have the original the original match point no they tied it to 5-5 so this will be their second Opportunity. You know what? I've lost count. We're not even that deep into OT and I've lost count. This is definitely not the first time that Hydra has had the opportunity to close out the series. 
Also, Dexterity had the opportunity to close out the series. Who is going to be the first to break through and get the W for their team? What an exciting match we've had so far. I mean, insane. And and it and it's so apropos that, that this is how it ends. Not necessarily this round, but that, that in deep overtime is how this match will end after the wonderful performance, the stupid mistakes, the clutch plays that both of these teams have managed to pull off throughout the series. So heading upstairs, our dexterity on the defense. Once again, after losing last time around, uh, seeing maybe they had something, if they slightly tweaked it, it would have gone better for them. But I mean, they just got picked apart one by one. They weren't in a position to refrag all that effectively. You know, you had the pulse inside of Attic, you had Sipping on OJ top of the armory stairs, who both got uh, just outnumbered, really, in their engagements and didn't even win their one-on-ones when given the opportunity. Um, and again, this bottom up clear as well coming out. There's been three attackers go rush the construction tunnel and secure the basement floor and then move to main. And now they've got some competition here as sipping on OJ, the Jaeger inside a supply room will get heavily droned out. He tries to take the angle down hallway, but it's the aviation blitz. A wonderful ADS what? shuts down sipping on OJ with a one tap in the back of the head. And once again, this room clear starting things off much better. Uh, and Hydra has had a lot of success when aviation has stayed alive. Aviation just sipping on OJ and sipping on OJ. <laughs> and, and for those who saw that really, that uh, the last time that we saw Dexter, their qualifying match, the finals, will know exactly what, it, what I'm talking about here. But either way, they are a man up and uh, in a very great position to finally end this. It's definitely not over yet. Dexterity might have a little bit, or I would say might have. I bet you they have a lot of aggression still left up their sleeves. But will that aggression pay off like it's been? from time to time, or will it be a detriment to them? The uh, Habana will finally start approaching the building, watching that very long angle through front door as Dokubi will take control of the master bedroom. A little bit of droning will come out as Habana will break in, although the wall is banded, and so somebody's going to have to do a rotate around, bust the window, and try to shoot out one of those, one of those uh, uh, bandits. Here comes the Twitch drone, but having to remove... The Mute will notify the defense of its position. Nyx will get another kill. It's a 5-3 now, and only three defenders separate Hydra from taking this long best of three series. Game number one in this 14-week season. Can they pull it off, or will Dexterity have something up their sleeve to stop this ambush? Nitro being launched out to Generator will down but not finish off Aviation as all the attackers filing in as finally the breach hole gets opened up into the master bedroom closet. A rappel coming out from Nyx on the kids' bedroom windows trying to cut off any more rotations and apply some pressure into those anchors playing inside of kids. Smoke grenades coming out down the hallway. Massive sprays from Chef. Who will light up Aviation but not finish him off? Aviation just a tidbit of health. But still, all five attackers standing. Only 30 seconds. The phones are going off, and a triple kill coming out from three different members of Dexterity will stop this attack in its tracks. Only 20 seconds, and what a turn of events as the last two come out in a split second, and we're back. Tied. We're going deeper in overtime. Sorry, folks, we know that the frames are a little bit on the wonky side, so we're debating whether or not to do a rehost. I think we're going to stick it out for now. It's definitely the game that's doing this, so for once, one of the problems isn't our fault. Go figure. And uh, it looks like we're going to... Uh, Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a rehost right now. So our uh, observer has to just make the two switch every two. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going into round 17. We're going to do a quick rehost. And when we come back, we are going to see the epic conclusion. We've gone all the way into three rounds. So I'm going to put a nice little timer up for you as we do this rehost. 
and we will be back momentarily with the conclusion of Dexterity versus Hydra Gaming.
Welcome back, folks. Sorry about that. We wanted to go ahead and re-host the game because the game was causing a lot of frame issues. Well, I guess when you go that deep in overtime. But all 10 players are back in the in the game. This is round number 17 that we're about to start. It'll say 0-0 because zero, zero, it effectively is. It's win by two now. Trade every two rounds. Hydra will be starting on defense. No sights will be locked. So here we go. We are going to get started right away on Oregon overtime. This is map number three, one one, a map each. And what a game we've seen so far. We will see at least two more rounds. Hydra has had the opportunity to win twice, I believe. And Dexterity, the opportunity to win twice as well. Actually, they've had the opportunity to win a lot. They were up 5-2 at one point on this map. And Hydra was able to bring it all the way back to 5-5 into OT, win the first OT round. And now it's been going back and forth ever since. My name is Tight Angles. I'm joined tonight by Flynn. Hey, bud. Late night. Late night. We have frames back, though, so I'm happy. It's, uh, it's getting a little rough there, as I know uh, a bunch of people in chat were getting pretty antsy as well. So uh, we fixed things. Everything's fine. Everybody relax. Deep breath. And uh, is attacker defender roll swap, too? Yes. Uh, double reinforcement of the meeting hatches once again. So this has been a theme. Hydra enjoying this turtle strat on the downstairs defense, not trying to implement any kind of roam game, just playing the five on site and letting it stall out for the attack. Um, and they haven't been getting too aggressive, which is another key point. As we saw on border and coastline, Dexterity try to play the aggression, and it was at their detriment that they did, and this time around, now we're seeing uh, Hydra as well. They started getting a little aggressive in that Rome game in the middle of the round, and now we are uh, unlucky. Uh, <laughs> now we're seeing Hydra going for more of a rehost. Not a rehost, Jesus. A, uh, <laughs> a defensive <laughs> turtle strat. They said they I'm said no that. this time. <clears throat> Believe it or not, we actually had to make an extra playlist, which is what took the time. If we had to rehost again, it'd be a real quick uh, little one and two. So Dexterity now deciding to bring a shield, but still attacking this blue. The defenders are fully waiting for it. They got the entire feet area blown out of that wall. Four defenders are all watching that angle. And uh, Exo is just going to kind of poke in here with the shield into the bullets. He will get the batteries, take a little bit of damage for it, but now they will be able to open up this wall. So here comes Sippin. He will put a Claymore down just to watch the rotate. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe he decides to do it so that way nobody runs out of the hole when he thermites it, but the thermite will go up, and it will go off. I'm not sure if it's going to destroy the Claymore in the process. Rudy will get the C4 kill on Exo. So the shield being brought up for the first time from Dexterity will get removed off the board first. Exo having a bad day getting eliminated quickly off the board. A very bad rotation as Aviation was kind of pinned in. Sipping on OJ will capitalize and take his head off. And so now we got an even game. About a minute 15 left. Nix will try to push it. Sipping will get his second kill of the round. He was doing a fantastic job solo there in blue. Great reaction there by sipping on OJ to shut down the aggression from Nyx. And now these three defenders stacked inside a supply room. Smoke canisters coming out from hot and cold. So he will repel this push through box as the buck of Yaga just stationed outside of the doorway. Trying to launch out a frag grenade now. No Jaeger on the board, but Yudi will gut Rudy, sorry, will gun him down before he launches the frag. It explodes at the base of his feet of his dead cold body. And now pushing into the back again is Sippin' alone. He does have support upstairs from Chef at the hallway hatch. Not sure where Hyper's gone off to. He could be coming for a flank as none of these defenders are checking behind them. And that's where Hyper is at the top of the armory stairs waiting for a flank himself. 30 seconds on the board and the attack needs to get moving to start displacing these anchors who have incredibly powerful positions hiding and don't need to make the first move. No, they don't. Only 20 seconds tick away. The attackers still stalled out. All the angles at which the attackers could come down through or across are being covered. RTC at that prone position will end sipping on, on OJ's life. RTC will get a second. Hyper will get a kill, but RTC will finish it out with a triple kill. 
Wonderful job there by RTC. I thought he was going to go down to Hyper as well, and Hyper is going to pick up the double kill and leave it up to the uh, Valkyrie of Rudy in a 1v1. What a great reaction by uh, by RTC there. An unfortunate missing of the headshot by Hyper, and we very, very well possibly could be done here once again. Hydra up. What's the score line? 9 8. Yeah. So for those of you just joining us, welcome. This is not actually round number two coming up. This is actually round number 17. I'm sorry, round number 18 coming up. We had to do a rehost because we were in the game for so long. The frame started going to hell in a handbasket. But here we are. This is going to be Hydra's third opportunity to take the win here. They have been on a roller coaster ride of a day. Both of these teams have. This is map number three in a best of three. And on top of that, we're in quadruple, quintuple overtime. You name it, we're probably there. Round number 18 incoming. And all Hydra has to do is win one more round. They've been here before. They haven't been able to clutch it out. But ladies and gentlemen, we will stay here until somebody can manage to win by two. That is what we are here for. So here we go into round 18 as Hydra attempts to defend the upstairs. Uh, more roll switches coming out. So Yaga filling in on the Ying roll. Sipping on OJ, been a steady breacher and support player throughout all three maps. Quick punch out of the window there is uh, someone trying to get too aggressive inside of the kids' windows. But uh, Exo hopping over to Capitao now and uh, Hyper staying steady on the Twitch. So a uh, little swap up there. Instead of Exo taking either the Ash or the Ying, he's gone for another three speed, but with the uh, utility of the smokes and the asphyxiating bolts this time around. Yes, indeed. So 40 seconds off the clock. Not a lot of time. Couple of uh, drones still kind of cruising, trying to gain a little bit of information. Up white stairs, the Twitch drone will que creep. I'm not sure if he got the mirror window open. Sorry about the sound, folks. The sound should be back now. I do that from time to time. But uh, we are back now. Did he? Was he able to get the mirror open? I didn't hear that. I did not see either if the mirror was opened up. Wasn't paying attention to that. Uh, eh, but happens. still 5v5 over a minute deep into the round now. And uh, just checking to see if that mirror did get opened up. Can't quite tell. The one in the armory hallway has not been open. But the one at the top that of the has. Yep. has. And Yaga gonna pick the first pick. Nick's gonna trade it right back out as that's the Ying off the board. She did use a Candela on her push to take down Aviation. That's the Mira and a Nitro off the board. So a good look here for Dexterity. Still level man count midway through the round. They're lighting up the ex, uh, destroyed mirror on the top of White Stairs. Trying to light up anyone trying to play in behind that ejected mirror. Pass a little Rudy laying in wait. Inside of kids and all four defenders now stacked on site awaiting this push is 70 seconds left from the board Yeah, hot and cold laying at the top of white stairs aka the Flynn spot waiting for somebody to come up and push him Nix will get a kill on the hyper Exo will trade it right back trades going back and forth back and forth Exo will push up white stairs hot I'm not sure where he got off to we'll get dumped Exo will get a kill on to Nix I'm not sure if that's a double kill by Exo but either way two kills coming out from dexterity and now they only need to find two more. 44 seconds to do it at Exo. Very weak now at the top of White Stairs. The Bandit will drop down for a flank in the kitchen. He'll look around, not seeing anybody yet. He just sees Exo there and will take him out at the bottom of White Stairs. They know where he is. And only two attackers remain. If they can finish him off, they will win the round. The Thermite will get taken out by RTC from the down position. Rudy will get the last one, and that will be it, ladies and gentlemen. Hydra will win the, the match 18 rounds deep into map number three. Hydra winning the first game of the season and dexterity. After all that work, after all that comeback, after such a horrible start, will go home with a heart-crushing defeat. What a game. What a masterful demonstration of resiliency throughout that entire matchup. I was really impressed by both teams' uh, refusal to back down uh, and always keep battling, even in harsh conditions, even in harsh situations. And both of those teams, I've, that is a hard-fought game, 
and unfortunately only one team can come away with the points in the standings come away with the win and move up the leaderboard our week number one play day number one is finally in the books what's that five almost five and a half hours of uh of the broadcast this evening for north america plenty of tech issues but we did uh, stick the landing near the end there absolutely we did so uh, we'd like to thank you so much folks for joining us if you're new here slap that follow button this is week one play day one we got 14 weeks of competitive action to bring you here at ccs you don't know what we're all about follow us on twitter at ccs